We've got Hive by Earl Sweatshirt versus Hard Times by Ray Charles. Wow. What's up, you're watching Hive Mind, the most indelible show on the internet. My name is Razzy, I'm joined by my intellectual co-host, Graydon. <laughs> Astute observation. And today we're doing the first bracket where we don't get to choose the winner. This is... Our favorite songs bracket. So this one's been in the works for a while, and this is how it's gonna work. We've each selected our 32 favorite songs of all time, and DJ Grant has taken those songs and put them on a bracket. Then he sent the matchups from the first round to the final round to our Patreon to decide. Yes. We don't know which songs are going up against which, and DJ Grant didn't tell our Patreon who picked which songs. Mm -mm. So we're gonna play it out like a normal bracket. We're gonna hear a clip of each song, we're gonna talk about the songs, then we're gonna ask DJ Grant which which song you guys pick to move on all the way to the end until there is a winner. So for everyone who's complained about our decisions in the other brackets, this one was up to you. And if it wasn't up to you, you can join our Patreon to participate in brackets like these in the future. Thanks to everyone who voted and took the time to listen to our favorite songs. All right, before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more, HiveMindTV.com for our merch. We also have a brand new drop on Cope's website. It's on the screen. Look at it. It's our biggest drop ever, and it's available right now. We also have our Patreon and our Cameo linked in description if you'd like to support us or click the join button here on YouTube and become a member. I love the members. We also have short form content over on TikTok and Instagram Reels. Follow us over there. Let's do it. Let's do this. <laughs> oh God. As always, first round, we're gonna hear clips of the songs. After that, we just play it out. Also, these were seeded based on number of streams. So Graydon's songs, one through 32, most streamed to least streamed is mm -hmm. how those were seeded. And same with mine. Yeah. First matchup. God, 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 God be with me. And we will reveal, by the way, as we go, who picked which song. Kendrick. Lamar's Fear versus Krause's Bum. God, this is gonna be full of just some great matchups. Yeah, <laughs> matchups you'd never see anywhere else. No! If I can smoke fear away, I roll that motherfucker up. Fantastic song. I mean, wow. I'm high now. I'm high now. <laughs> Texas shoegaze band Kraus. Yeah, I believe it's just a one man project, but. It sounds like a lot of people. <laughs> you know what I mean? It sounds like more than one guy. Sounds like a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Tiny band. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised that this is a 16 seed. Yeah. It's not like a big song or anything, but a song that I became addicted to. Hooked. So yeah, obviously I picked Bum by Kraus. I picked Fear by Kendrick Lamar. But I love that song. I learned to love the Kraus song too. You got me into a lot of shoegaze and some noisy stuff that I usually wouldn't listen to while listening listening to your 32. But again, it's not up to us, Riley. Well, I would be absolutely shocked if Kendrick <laughs> didn't. It's gonna be a blowout. You don't know what they pick, Grant. It's gonna be like 90-10. <laughs> they did pick Fear by Kendrick. Okay. And? 83.3 to 16.7. Wow. Honestly, they put up a fight. Yeah. Kraus put up a fight. <laughs> yeah, it's like a D3 school playing Ohio State. Yeah. <laughs> and I love the fact that you guys listen to it, too. That's why we sent it to our Patreon, by the way, is because we wanted people to actually listen. Yeah. And not just pick the most popular song. Right. Or be like, oh, I don't know that song. I'll just pick the one I know. Mm -hmm. We wanted people to, like, really listen. So we sent the playlist ahead of time before we sent out the matchups. Yeah. Kendrick Fear moves on. Second matchup, we've got the band's I Shall Be Released versus Seeger Rose's Svenji Anglar. There you go. I'm guessing on how to say that. My little Icelandic freak. It might not even be Icelandic yeah. because they created their own language yeah. called Haplandish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I shall be released. Now I told you ahead yeah. of time, I like the band. Mm -hmm. I do not love this song. Hey, I love the band. Probably my favorite band of all time. But this is just my way to get two Bob Dylan songs in here. You know what I mean? I didn't feel right. Like I felt like every artist that I love kind of gets one representation. I didn't yeah. want to put four Sly songs, four Bob Dylan songs, four Ray Charles songs or something. So this was really my way of getting my favorite artists of all time two tracks in here. Yeah, I was gonna do that with Bright Eyes and Connor Oberst. Yeah. And then I felt like it was unfair. So I mm -hmm. just put a Bright Eyes song in. In this instance, it worked because I love the band so much too that I was like ah leave on Helm's voice doing a Bob Dylan track added something to it I love it yeah I just don't like the vocals on this song I don't know it's weird it's not they, it's they not my weird. favorite band song <laughs> I love that song. Oh, that song has made me cry more than most songs. Yeah. And back when I smoked weed. Oh, that's a jam. It's like something <laughs> does something to your brain on like both sides of it. It's like, 
I don't even know. Seeger Rose, Icelandic post-rock band. I could have picked probably 10 different Seeger Rose songs, but this is just the one that really like captured me. And it's like nine minutes long. Yeah. It's just like, it has the most there for me mm -hmm. and feels the most special. It's a movie. Yeah. It's the most beautiful atmosphere like music can get you to. Yeah. That's how I feel like when I listen to Seeger Rose. It's just like, ah, oh, this is the most, it's like heaven. <laughs> yeah. People like really chase that. And I yeah. feel like that's where you get some kind of like shallow, just supposed to feel cinematic and big mm -hmm. and this feels like the most pure version of that yeah. is like it really does come out of them like they just happen to make the most cinematic pillowy beautiful music possible yeah. this one could go either way i think seager rose walks here all right let's see seager rose does move on okay. what was the what was the race there the band had 47% and Seeger Rose had 53%. Wow, really tight. I figured that'd be kind of close. Yeah, that kind of surprises me because that is a weirder band cut for sure. If you do like that song, Bob Dylan does a live in Japan version that is breathtaking. <laughs> so you guys can go check that out. <laughs> and if you like Sven G. Anglar, look up live versions of that because he plays his guitar with a violin bow. <laughs> God, is it awesome. When we saw it live, it, the bow blew up because yeah. the guitar just ripped the hair off it. Uh, and I ripped my hair out at that show. I was on KCP. Which I thought was the Russian government. No, I was on Contavious Caldwell Pope's shoulders. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. He's tall. Yeah. It helped me see. I had to see. <laughs> I had to see. I said, KCP, get me up there. <laughs> Next matchup, and this is some dirty work. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> His Simple Twist of Fate by Bob Dylan mm -hmm. versus Poison Oak by Bright Eyes. I mean, a battle of the songsters. This is my favorite songwriter of all time versus your favorite songwriter of all time. Yeah. In the first round is just nasty. Yeah, this is uh, Ali versus Frazier, <laughs> you know? Hey, and watch out for a simple twist of fate. Man! Oh, oh, great song. Love that song. One of Ooh. Bob's, like, best singing performances. Such an awesome story. Just, oh. Love that era, yeah, too. That's like, my favorite That's my era. favorite Bob Dylan era. Yeah. yeah. Right before he turned his back on folk. <laughs> <laughs> Went electric. Yeah. Who needs instruments, Bob? Yeah, Just come wail. On. Just wail on it. <laughs> I played that song for many a date. Like, you played it? Yeah. Oh, how'd that go? Bad. Yeah, I was going to say. Song's about a prostitute. Right. You'd think I would read into that a little more, but. But me, I'm a single cell on a serpent's tongue. <laughs> if Svenji Anglar made me cry, this song has made me cry more than any song ever. Now you said that about the last song. I know, that's what I said. <laughs> I said, this one beats it. I'm a single cell on a serpent's tongue. I'm a muddy field where a garden was. Sad stuff. Now I'm drunk as hell on a piano bench. And yeah. when I press the keys, it all gets reversed. The sound of loneliness makes me happier. <laughs> God damn. Also, I just picked Poison Oak. I have like 35 yeah. favorite Bright Eyes songs. And I really wanted to put Milk Thistle by Connor Oberst on here. It's my favorite. I also love Mama Borthwick, another yeah. Connor Oberst solo. But I just went with Poison Oak. It's probably the one I've spent the most time with. That's, that is yeah. like a really, really great Bright Eyes song. It's kind of my philosophy with Simple Twist of Fate is like I could have chosen, you know, a deep cut Bob song that I love or something, but I just needed something that kind of, it was like between this or like Boots of Spanish Leather. Yeah. Like a storytelling, really good singing performance, early Bob song that I learned to play on guitar when I was like 13. Hey, may the best man win. Who'd they choose, G? They chose Bob. <laughs> you can't have Connor without B.O.B. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking airplanes in the night skies, like, like shooting, shooting stars. stars. Yeah. And I could use a wish right now. I wish that Poison Oak might be. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, no, fair. All is fair. Yeah. All is fair and love and piss. Yeah. That's a great matchup right there. And now we've got <laughs> the Gap Band Outstanding versus MGMT Siberian Breaks. Wow. What a matchup. This, once again, can't find this anywhere else on the internet. Nope. <laughs> 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 yeah. Fantastic song. I mean, if you like those drums, duh. <laughs> you know? Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> yeah, of course you do. They've been used a billion times. Right. <laughs> this era of early funk is just, it's like getting raw dogged. <laughs> You know, what, what do you, what's, it just feels good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It just feels better. Oh, it right. feels better than a condom.
This is another one, like a nine minute song has like six songs within it. I used to time my walk to class in college by Siberian Breaks. Like I'd be like, I can listen to Siberian Breaks one or two times, <laughs> depending on how far away the class was. Yeah. It's just a song that like, I don't know what it is. It like kept revealing new things about it that I loved. And it just has this like perfect ebb and flow to it. And it's funny because I wanted to put Time to Pretend on here. Yeah. Because I love that song as a pop song, as like an indie pop song from my childhood. And I had both of them on there for a second because they feel like different bands. Yeah, for sure. Like they're so different, but I just had to go with Siberian Breaks because I feel like it's giving me more and yeah. I feel like that's just because of the length and like what it does it's more daring you're like the asshole at the dive bar you're like well I could play a song everyone knows or I could play a nine minute track that I love yeah yeah. <laughs> hey know. this is an interesting matchup because I feel like our fans definitely like stuff that's been sampled a ton and then MGMT is a huge part of our fan base but this is not a popular MGMT that's fair this is like the asshole at the dive bar's yeah. favorite MGMT <laughs> yeah. song you know so I don't think it's gonna win especially because Outstanding is sampled in 911 yeah. Mr. Lonely by Tyler the Creator or at least interpolated yeah but I would expect Outstanding to win this matchup man those congas those pop right in your mouth ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. oh what one Grant the Gap Band does take it yeah the GB I'm about to do a GB on live for the first time tonight. A gravity bong? Yeah, I'm what? doing a gravity bong live stream tonight. Where? TikTok. Like on our TikTok? Yeah. Why? What do you mean? Why? It's awesome. <laughs> you ever seen a gravity bong? I mean, obviously we've done. You, yeah. yeah, we've done that together. But yeah. I just, why are you doing it on live stream? Because it gets you blinked. <laughs> Why? But our TikTok is like, we just do like top 10 lists and stuff. Like yeah. it has nothing to do with. It's time to change it up. <laughs> I'm going to do a gravity bong live stream tonight. Midnight. Till noon. Midnight till noon? Yeah. I'm That's a, a long time, oh, man. Dude, it's 12 I'm, hours. I'll be lucky to make it out alive, brother. <laughs> but if I do, bet I'll bring some cash. <laughs> Well, thank you for the roses, I guess. <laughs> thank you for the resin. <laughs> now we've got oh! Time After Time by Chet Baker versus Ice Blink Luck by the Cocteau Twins. Oh, I love both these songs. Yeah. Wow. And both these songs have class. And I have class in 10 minutes. <laughs> Get out of here, kid! <laughs> and time after time. I don't know about this, <laughs> man. There's a lot of smoke in here. <laughs> I know. Oh, I can't see shit, man. I can't see shit, man. Are we part of the problem? <laughs> I'm just trying to fit in. People should stop smoking in here. Seriously. We got a light. <laughs> I don't think they should allow smoking in establishments. This is the only song I care about on this bracket. Oh, yeah? This is the greatest song of all time. It's like rain. Oh! It's just like rain. <laughs> rain on a <laughs> now, it's not the only song I care about on the bracket, but there's just something. Chet did something. He invented cool jazz. And it's just so slow. Everything has its right spot. It's so patient. It's all about, like, those ghost notes. Like, so much jazz is about flash and so solos and stuff and when Chet takes a solo there's like a whole measure before the horn even makes a noise he'll be like <laughs> and it's just sleepy sleepy oh, horn it just touches you in all the right spots I absolutely love it I love it too it reminds me of Christmas reminds me of Matt Damon right because I will admit the reason I got into Chet Baker is from the talented Mr. Ripley and Matt Damon sings My Funny Valentine in that and I was like holy shit that sounds good Matt and I got into Chet Baker because of Chet Faker. <laughs> Great yeah, DJ. Yeah. I was listening to him and I was like, <laughs> Sounds familiar. wait a minute, this is named after a guy? And then I went and looked him up and said, all right, not half bad. Yeah. Could use a drop though. My favorite karaoke song to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, you could really hit that one. I messed that one up yeah. in the bar. Oh, yeah, you definitely mess it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's bad. Most people do. I go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I could have literally picked any song on this album, and I feel like a lot of people were surprised that I picked this one, but it's just that vocal run is, like, so hypnotizing. <laughs> I like this beat a lot, too. I love this album. His beat? Yeah, like, like the rhythm behind it. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's got a more straightforward... The instrumental, I would say. Yeah, yeah, the beat that Swizz cooked up for them on this one is, like, <laughs> 
fire. <laughs> yeah, metros. It's a little more one. straightforward. Like some of them are super ethereal. This one's drums, just kind of like are driving. I don't know. Yeah, I, I love this song, Heaven or Las Vegas. Those are like two of my favorite songs ever. They're in my top fifty. Really? Probably. Wow. One of them is. I think that Time After Time wins this. Well, yeah, better. Maybe I don't know. Cocktail Twins are kind of popular with our fan base, though. They're this could probably. go either way. Yeah. What'd they pick, Grant? Cocktail Twins moves on. Oh no! <laughs> uh, sorry. That's all right. I'm so sorry. Hey, I lost Poison Oak. So. I, I know. And I got Bob Dylan in there, and so an I'm eye right. for an eye until the whole world goes blind. Ow. I wish I was blind. No, you don't. Look at your ugly ass anymore. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, now we got... <laughs> now we've got <laughs> So Anxious by Genuine versus Powerful Man by Alex G. Wow. I love that I had to speak that sentence yeah. on YouTube. Two songs about sex addiction. <laughs> you know I'm a sexaholic. <laughs> come on! <laughs> There'll be bubble baths! <laughs> In back rubs. <laughs> Imagine being so horny you develop a stutter. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, so. And it gets longer as the song goes. I know. It seems like he's edging. Yeah. Because by the time that last so comes in, you got to bust a nut. This song is like so <laughs> sexual that it's almost like a parody. Yeah. I mean, it's like this song came out and I feel like the whole R&B world like kind of did a different lane. They were like, oh, we got to go more subversive now because he just like... He literally fucked a song. Yeah, he He's, fucked a song. Yeah, he, he raw dogged a song. <laughs> Try putting on this song when you're about to have sex, and you'll both laugh. Yeah, you can't do it. What you, are you going to do? Be like, <laughs> <laughs> you're not about to like lay some you, 80s porno pipe. This song is going to fuck whoever you're with yeah. better than you can. Yeah, well said. <laughs> this song's in my top 50. Yeah. I love this We've song. had a lot of good times listening to this song. Not like that. No, I didn't even suggest that. I just mean like not you and me. Not like that. And like cars, especially. Platonically, when, you and yeah. me. Yeah. And sampled in Legend by Drake. Correct. I'm gonna be a powerful man. Red down the My favorite Alex G song. I had a tough time choosing between maybe 10 different Alex G songs, but this one is special. Yeah. There's no other Alex G song like it. It's raw, like folksy. It's just beautiful. And that's a lot of songs on Rocket really have this kind of like rural Pennsylvania vibe to them. Mm -hmm. You know, like the baby bitter on the cheek. Yeah. That was pretty funny to me. Mm -hmm. Like it's very talkative. It's very playful, but like great story. This is an Alex G song I can listen to every day, which I could only say about three. Yeah. Could do that for me. I think they're going Alex G. There's no way our fans pick Genuine over Alex G. Think of our fans. Our fans aren't like big sex havers. No. Yeah. Uh, they're big music nerds. And I picked the Alex G song and you picked the Genuine song. Correct. And that says something. What'd they pick, Grant? Alex G. Yeah. Was it a landslide? No. Really? 53.7 to 46.3. All right, my sexers. <laughs> Shout out all the sex havers. <laughs> Come on, Who watch us. And now we've got, wow, another <laughs> crazy one. Dr. John. Such a night versus Mitski's I don't smoke. Oh, these, yeah, all these are sound bits. <laughs> the fact, you're even saying that's just awesome. Let's listen to some Cajun crooning. If I don't do it, you know somebody else will be. It is such a night. What do you think of this song? I like it a lot, but it is... It's Randy Newman-esque. It's like a caricature, though. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't do it, you know, somebody else will. It's just got, like, Dr. John has such, like, a like, Bourbon Street vibe. Like, you can see the bottles being slid across the table, and, like, people are hitting him while he's playing the piano, but yeah. he's still, like, cranking this tune out. Takes you to such a place, and this is just the ultimate, like, drinking night song. Like, like if I have an afters at my house, I'm playing this song at some point. I'm like, who needs another one? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean is it's like cartoonish. Yeah. And he was such a character. He's like a witch doctor. He dressed like Liberace if he like grew up in the swamp and could speak French or something. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what is this guy's deal? <laughs> have said many times after listening to this song that it is my favorite song of all time. <laughs> and it, it's so like clunky and underproduced. It feels like a genius garage band creation. Yeah. You know, like it doesn't knock as hard mm -hmm. as other songs like it had, but it, it just has all this like deep, dark charm to it. Every time I listen to this, I just feel myself like 
Ugh. Like I like, <laughs> grit my teeth. Like I'm like, oh, like <laughs> you're a sucker for vocals. Yeah, and she's a fantastic vocalist, yeah. but an emotive vocalist. Yes. and that's what I love about Mitski is like it's a classically trained singer who breaks the rules where she needs to because she's emoting. You can mm-hmm. tell she feels and thinks about everything she's saying. You know. Oh, sorry, I was emoting. <laughs> yeah, right. I was emoting on you. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my Mitski impression. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Thank you for the roses. Grant, what did they choose? They chose Mitski. Yeah. I mean, you put up two power players here. Mitski and Alex G up against Genuine and Dr. John. It makes sense. <laughs> and Mitski's crossover has really improved yeah. and her court vision has been yeah. great this season. So it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Dr. John's dead. So. <laughs> That's a big part of it. Yeah. <laughs> no way. <laughs> All right. We've got Mercy, Mercy Me by Marvin Gaye versus Starfall by Salem. <laughs> If you don't picture a winter Woodward Avenue cruising in like an old Buick and people on the sidewalks in like fur coats, buses, old Detroit manufacturer laborers. I mean, it's it's beautiful. That's the greatest vocalist of all time. Maybe. Well, <laughs> might be. There's some contenders for sure. But if you want Sam wanna, Smith, if you want to take that combination of classical singers with emotive capabilities. Bad bunny. Well, you got a point there, buddy. I can't really argue that because I don't understand a word he says. Well, okay, but it's just in Spanish. That's yeah, why. Yeah. So, okay. My favorite Salem song. I, I'm catching a trend here of like stuff that I usually don't listen to, the ones you pick. Yeah. Not the ones you've exposed me to over the last several years. And I'm like, I have fond memories of them regardless. You know what I mean? Right. The synths on this song just hit like yeah. 50 bricks. Like it's <laughs> fucking crazy. I could have picked a lot of Salem songs. And I feel like this is like a very non based Salem pick. Like there's a lot of older songs or songs like not from their official albums that contend for me and are favorites of mine. But like when it really comes down to it I think this is my favorite Salem song it's just like the one I feel like I've had the most emotional experiences with yeah the music video I remember the first time I watched it so vividly the storm chaser video yeah it like made me want to become a storm chaser someday <laughs> like actually like it's just you hate danger no I love storms I've always loved tornadoes i would storm chase with you if we went down in a tornado chasing it that'd be the coolest thing we could do literally yeah that's what I mean summer tornado season yeah 2020 six yeah let's do we, it. we lay some more groundwork we get a yeah. lot of content out there all that stuff <laughs> then we chase and then we chase yeah. for one year and of course we make some content about it but sure. it's gonna be beautiful and yeah. it's not gonna be funny have you seen the video of the cat that gets swept away in a tornado yeah and he goes el gato <laughs> <laughs> it's not that funny because it's it's a cat going it's dying <laughs> Oh, it's funny that they call him Gato. <laughs> that's funny. That's what? That's just Spanish. Yeah, it's funny to me, though, because I don't hear it all the time. El Gato. So it's not like, the cat! I hear El Gato, it's kind of funny. And yes, rest in peace, that cat. But also, I've seen cats fall from 40 stories and walk it off. Well, yeah, but that a tornado cat probably different. went to the next town and was chilling. No, I don't. <laughs> probably. I mean, maybe. I guess a cat Cats has a better indestructible, chance. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right, Um, if Marvin Gaye loses here, I will not be upset, because it makes sense, because our fans are based and shit and they don't they don't understand hand percussion and what it takes to write a song like Mercy Mercy Me in the time that it was written. What what they choose, Grant? What it takes is having a really mean dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. And confused sexual feelings and a much older partner. Marvin Gaye sweeps it. Uh, ooh. <laughs> Ah, I figured that would happen. That's good, man. Yeah. Rest in peace, Marvin. I mean, Witch House is not going to go up against Marvin Gaye. It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, with our fans, man, these are it's going to surprise me every time they pick a classic over Witch House. Salem's such a small band in the grand scheme of things. Like, they have a really dedicated cult fan base, but everybody knows Marvin Gaye. Don't. Oh, I was going to touch I was going to boop you on the nose no. as a sign of affection. Not while you're talking about Marvin. Don't boop. fucking boop me. Can I boop you? Later. All right. Next, we've got Kanye West's Father Stretch My Hands Part 1 versus Nina Simone's What Have They Done to My Song, Ma. Beautiful morning. Get a song in my morning, bed. I mean, this is a song I wake up with in, in my head often. Yeah. I wake up and I go, I want to be a liberal. I watch basketball highlights of myself in my head. Yeah. And the moment it hits the basket. <laughs> Beautiful morning. Yeah. 
Here to sun in the morning, babe. Yeah. Nothing in the water. That's good you imagine that kind of stuff. I often imagine myself performing one of my favorite songs back at my high school when I was like in high school. Yeah. It'll be like, all right, here he comes. What's he got? And I'll sing like Nina Simone, but I'll do it like perfectly. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh my God. I also, I know we've done a Kanye bracket before and this song didn't win that bracket. Right. But I've come to realize if I'm going on like a pure joy meter, <laughs> this one is yeah. the one that does it for me the most. I might like Hold My Liquor or Can't Tell Me Nothing more, but if I'm just trying to listen to a song that feels like a cheat code and gets my joy up, gets my <laughs> serotonin going, yeah. it's this one. Talk about a joyful song. I mean, yeah. This one just like, it like kind of unpeels itself and then it peels itself back up. Mm. Like it ends like very delicately and it feels like, I don't know, you're like getting her story of like becoming the star that she became. Look what they've done to my brain. Look what they've done to my song. Like they've taken everything about me that was pure and they've tried to make it something else. And then you get a song like this. That just feels so cool. I liked this one a lot. I didn't really know this song yeah. before listening. For it's a bracket. deeper cut. And of it's, hers. it's, uh, it's beautiful. It's very, it's emotional, but it's like upbeat. Yeah. It's uh it's an interesting one. Yeah. I feel like that's the kind of the hidden commentary in it is it's this bouncy tune but it's about something more serious in that way it reminds me of love song by sarah Bareilles. god good track really good track i'm not gonna write you to a love song. song if you ask for it if you need one yeah banger you see no yeah. nina simone though no nina simone's way better I even, <laughs> I, i'm like ashamed that i brought up sarah hey. Bareilles in a nina simone conversation that's all right but I had to. Yeah. And uh, I am going to wager to say that I think Kanye probably won this one. We'll see. Grant, what'd they pick? Kanye did win this one. Was it a walk? It was all right. Okay. 65%. Hey, I'm glad that you got to hear that Nina Simone song, and I'm glad everybody else got to listen to it, too. All right, now we got Head Over Heels by Tears for Fears versus Open Your Eyes by Bobby Caldwell. I mean, this is a banger matchup. Yeah. <laughs> I could listen to these two songs back to back and have a good 15 minutes. I think Open Your Eyes could have made it into my <laughs> yeah. 32. Like, it was probably close. Yeah, on know? the cusp. <laughs> if it's the one of yours that's grown on me the most, but it's most definitely the one I've noticed more. Like I started listening to your playlist and I was like, oh, I know this song. And then I'm listening to it with more intent and I'm like, oh, this is really good. And then outside of my own choices, I've heard it like 35 times. Yeah. I didn't realize how popular it was really until yeah. I paid close attention to it any 80s station or something you throw on, there's like a an 8% chance this song could come on. Yeah, it's a very popular song. Yeah. I fell in love with this song because of the Donnie Darko soundtrack. Yeah. And it's like the part where it goes, time flies. <laughs> and it like goes into the other song. It's like that when they're going into class and sitting down and Drew Barrymore's his teacher. God. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Now it Ooh, it gives me chills. What it gives me chills. Sin, 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 sin. And his voice is like, it's operatic. It's like the only way you could describe it. It just vibrates your soul. It's so huge. Yeah. His voice is so <laughs> huge and so natural. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. It's I absolutely love beautiful. that song. R.I.P. Bobby. Absolutely. What did they pick, Grant? They took Tears for Fears. I'm kind of surprised by that one a little bit. A little bit. I feel like if it was What You Won't Do for Love, it probably would have won, mm -hmm. just as the more known Bobby song. But hey, man, you hear the prices of jackets are getting so high that even Down's Up. Down's Up. I get it. It's like an oxymoron, but it's about goose feathers. Yeah. The, ja the jacket. Can you keep it moving? <laughs> Price. Can we keep it moving? It's getting so cold. The jacket price is going so high that down is up. Yeah, it could be back to the bracket, maybe. Okay. We've got Hive by Earl Sweatshirt versus Hard Times by Ray Charles. Wow. Crack ceramic and slap a hand out of cash accounts. Stamp it, shout and crash. And these niggas done let the crack in out. One of my favorite rap songs of all time. It might be my favorite. Yeah, it's this is in my top 50. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's, it's like there's not much to it. It's such a simple, murky, underground beat. But it's the flow choice. And yeah. like the amount of words packed into it. And like it just sticks on you. Yeah, there's so much personality. Like yeah. here I see it. I in the pyramid. God spit it like his true serum in that beer and then whew, 
disappear again, yeah. <laughs> reappear bearded on top of a Lear's gear and it into the kid's ear again. It's awesome. Provider of the backdrop music for the crack rock user and the mascot, Earl. Earl. <laughs> He's like, yeah, it's crazy. And then you got Vince on yeah, it. Yeah, the Vince verse took me away. Hard times. This is the epitome of the fusion of blues and jazz that like was Ray Charles at its highest possible peak. Yeah. It's just the description of losing everything. Hard times are just going to follow you around. That is like so pervasive in blues music. But then he fills it with these jazzy little licks and on the piano. And it has that like gospel in there too. It's just, it's unbelievable. Yeah. My mother told me one of these days. There'll be no more sorrow when I pass away. <laughs> yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. It's like the saddest song of all time. Yeah, it's that's, very, what, that's what I get out of it. I'm like, yeah. What do they pick, Grant? High Flames. Yeah. <laughs> that's all right. There aren't a lot of rap songs on here, and I feel like people were talking about that yeah. because we talk about rap a lot on the channel. I personally did avoid a few songs from artists that we have not done brackets of. Sure. Because I didn't want to spoil my leaning in any of those. So. But I figured a lot of the rap songs would be hard to beat. Yeah. Just because we have such a largely hip hop fan base. Mm -hmm. Do you think a rap song wins it? Maybe, but I, I don't think so. Now we got Can't Do Without You by Caribou versus Crying, Laughing, Loving, Lying by Lobby Seffrey. Two smaller artists. Ish, yeah. I feel like compared to, you know, Ray Charles. Right. <laughs> Maybe one of the ones I've learned to love the most. The only house song I put in here. It's haunting though. It's like, it's a weird sect of house. Yeah. <laughs> it is weird. It is like such a euphoric song. Yeah. Like I've always really wanted to see this song live. And mm -hmm. I, I'm sad I missed Caribou this year at Movement. But yeah. like, it's just one of those like eyes to the sky. <laughs> yeah. Like close your eyes. And it's like, <laughs> you know, there's something about it. It's very hypnotic. It's a song that'll be stuck in my head and I can't remember what it is. Like I'll have the rhythm and the vocal in my head. And I'm like, what song is that? And then two days later, I'll be like, oh, it's a Caribou track. It also feels so pure. Yeah. Like I can't. Do it. There's Everything. something like really like true about yeah. it. Like he's like, I, I really think he's singing about a person. Yeah. Like he's like, I can't do without you. <laughs> Just repeating that a million times really like it grabs me. There's yeah. something actually really, really <laughs> like heartfelt about this song. I love when that kind of sentiment can sneak into a space like house or a genre that usually doesn't it doesn't need stand it doesn't on that. need that. Yeah, yeah. 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 When those things happen together, that just it's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I have one of my favorites that you picked. Dude. And, and I didn't really know this song. Yeah. But wow. Lobby Seffrey's like the single most revolutionary influence on my music taste of the last 10 years. It was just tracing my song, like from the Kanye sample and listening to it and being like, oh, well, this is better than the Kanye song. Like, I love this song. I love how it's written. I love his voice. It's like finding something that was like made for you. That was like, you know, 45 years old. Uh -huh. It just felt like every track at the moment I found it was like each one was better than the next. I could have picked Canuck Chase off this. I could have picked Hotel Room. Any song on there is so good, but this is just the most accessible. I've picked it for people to, that are maybe new to Lobby to hear this and go listen to the album. I wonder what they picked. This is an interesting <laughs> matchup. I feel like they might have taken Lobby on this one. I feel like Caribou goes. What do we got? Lobby moves on. That's big for you guys and yep. me and yep. our relationship. Now we've got Idiotech by Radiohead versus Me and Those Dreaming Eyes of Mine by D'Angelo. Two powerhouses in terms of our music tastes. Yeah. I finally get your impression now after listening to more of this song. Cause you go, I say it's coming, I say it's coming, I say <laughs> That's more from his live performances right. of it, but I think if I had to seed these songs, I would have seeded this song in number one. Yeah. Like, in terms of my favorite. This is probably the song I listen to the most, where right afterwards I'm just like, that's probably my favorite song. <laughs> like, it's so good. It's so haunting. The production is yeah. like Aphex Twin inspired. Mm -hmm. It's just weird. All around, yeah. Weird, bizarre, like, but it all makes sense in like a hidden language kind of way or something. Like, to take all those bizarre elements elements and put them in something that is like legible. It's like creating a city in space. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, I understand it. Yeah, it works. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, I have like the the genuine representation of R&B and obviously the Marvin Gaye, like the older school aspect. But then there's this part that like only D'Angelo could do. Yeah. Which is like not only change like the vocal game in terms of like harmonies and how those are arranged, but the he plays every instrument and every instrument so tight and like composed in a, just an insane way. Yeah. The palette that D'Angelo created was super influential, yeah. but nobody's been able to replicate no. what D'Angelo <laughs> yeah. can do at all. Yeah. Like I know John Mayer trio tried and like Smino kind of like yeah. has this thing that is obviously D'Angelo inspired. A lot of rappers nowadays, yeah. rappers who can really vocalize and sing like Childish Gambino. Anderson Pac. Yeah. And the way he's like drumming and doing some like crazy rhythms with the vocals. Like you'll get a little, oh, that's a little D'Angelo-esque. Totally. But D'Angelo is so singular. And yeah. I, I've, that's why like to me, I can't pick a D'Angelo song. Yeah. It's kind of just like D'Angelo is like an album and almost like a career artist. You yeah. just like listen to D'Angelo. I love Voodoo. I love Black Messiah. But there's something in the first album that's like joyful is like the wrong word, but it's more like playful. Yeah. It's like cheeky in yeah. a way and then voodoo gets to like this level where you're like oh like he's not even he's done just showing off and he's like taking you into this whole space and black messiah is like exists even deeper in that world this first album is just on that surface and some of these tracks were my gateway into sick r&b wonder what they picked they picked radio i know yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay yeah. All right. well they picked grant they did pick radio. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I mean, that's good for them. I mean, that, it's, for you. it's, it's like, it's like people who don't even listen to Radiohead, this song, yeah. our fan base knows. Yeah. Now we got Digital Love by Daft Punk versus Sky Train by Omar S and Night Jewel. Yeah. Last night, I had a dream about you. This is 100% my most played song of this year. Yeah, I know it is. <laughs> I became obsessed with the song. Like, I always loved it, but I just became obsessed with it over the past year. This is a crazy matchup because I feel like both of these tracks are doing the same thing for ourselves. Because I like Digital Love a lot in the same way I like Sky Train. It's just this tight, catchy, kind of housey dance track with just the cheeky little vocal in there. It's like borderline corny. Yeah. To the point where like when I let myself just love it and not think about it like, oh, this could be an Owl City song. Yeah. And like instrumentally, it's so much more adventurous mm -hmm. and technical and like it's really, really well put together the way every Daft Punk song is. Yeah. But it lets itself be whimsical. Yeah. And the way I rediscovered this song is so funny. A girl I follow on Instagram posted a TikTok from an account called Shark Music music videos nice. that just makes like takes footage of sharks, sharks and puts songs on them with like the lyrics at the yeah. bottom and posted this one and I was like I forgot about that <laughs> song and then I just watched the shark video a bunch of just sharks swimming yeah. around and it was like last night I, I had, had a dream, dream about you in this dream <laughs> I mean, that's like, yeah, it does. It does. It, I could explain why I like this song, but it's the same reason why you like digital. Art. It's <laughs> yeah. just like when I turn off the part of my brand, that's like, oh, this is like stupid and a little corny. It's just the happiest, grooviest little. It reminds me of Wolfpack a lot. Yeah, it's very Wolfian. Like and, in the writing yeah. of the lyrics. You yeah. Know? What'd they pick, Grant? Daft Punk. That's fine. Now we've got, oh, this is an unfair matchup <laughs> for the first round. We've got Nick Drake's One of These Things First versus Jose Feliciano's Light My Fire. This one's close for me. One's a cover, though, I will say that. I know. I, that's why I was like, eh. Yeah. For that one. But Jose rips it to shreds, really puts his fist in Jim Morrison's face. One of these things. This is the one I saw people get wrong on the internet the most about who picked it. Oh, Everybody yeah. kind of thought that you picked this one. That makes sense. Which it makes sense because this is kind of in your wheelhouse. Yeah, but, but you like I love Nick Drake. Way like more than me. Huge Nick Drake fan. Yeah. And this song is the one that has stuck with me the most. It's like the most beautiful palette, but just the <laughs> writing is really yeah. my favorite. Like also sort of cheeky, but sad and yeah. kind of longing. But it's like about, you know, I could have been this. I could have been this. I could have been this. One of these things first. Yeah. And he had such a short life mm -hmm. tragically died at the age of I believe 26 yeah it feels like a guy in like a tailed coat is guiding me through a forest path that I've never been on and he's tiptoeing and almost floating right he's not even really touching the ground he's just kind of like 
<laughs> I always picture this as somebody playing a piano on a sailboat. Oh, that's a nice image. Like it a, a it have... tiny sailboat yeah. that couldn't hold a piano, but for some but reason it, it works. <laughs> and he's on there and he's like, could have been a doctor, <laughs> could have been a priest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he says that. <laughs> After that, he goes, light my fire, light my fire, light my fire, yeah, yeah. Light, 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 light. He's blind. He's crazy. <laughs> Jose Feliciano was nuts. And he got blackballed by the industry for singing the national anthem at a Dodgers game with a little bit of Latino flair. Ah, uh, yeah. And they shut his whole career down, and that was fucking tragic. Because yeah. this guy, just unbelievable, dude. He reminds me a lot of Van Morrison on this one. Yeah, uh, the vocal stylings, the way he's just, like, riffing off on it. And, like, yeah. he's playing a normal melody on the guitar, and then he's just, like, taking it somewhere else with his yeah. voice. I think my problem is I don't really, I never really loved The Doors. And Neither so, to me, I kind of, like, never really liked this song that much. Yeah. And so, this is just a good version of a song that I don't love. So, yeah. it didn't really stick with me as much, but, yeah, Jose's great. It's the only version of this song that I like. Yeah. It's his song in my mind. Like, right. when I think of this song, I'm like, oh, yeah, Jose's song. <laughs> I think this one could go either way. I think they go Nick Drake. What do you got, Grant? They take Nick Drake. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> Last one on the first side. Let Me Love You by Mario versus I've Known Rivers by Gary Bartz. This one's close for me. I know. I told you my favorite discovery <laughs> from your favorite songs is I've Known Rivers. That couldn't make me happier that that's the one you loved. It's so good. <laughs> it's just the same refrain. Like whenever I was listening to our <laughs> playlist on shuffle, I would start with I've Known Rivers every time. You should let me love you. Let me be the one to. The fact that this is in your top 32 is ridiculous, bro. <laughs> no, I mean, listen. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Listen, as far as R&B jams from pop radio, you can't get better than yeah. Let Me Love You by Mario. Yeah, you're probably right. I have learned to kind of like shed the whole trying to sound be cool yeah. about it, whatever sort of thing. And to me, I'm like pure... Again, the joy, joy meter. meter. <laughs> the joy meter is up. I love singing this song. Yeah. It's probably my favorite song to sing. Yeah, and the bridge. You take whatever, girl. <laughs> yes. Hey! <laughs> that bridge is, is crazy. Yeah. But I mean, everything about this song is so funny. He's yeah. like, he's trashing this other guy. Yeah. And being like, you should be with me. My love's better. <laughs> yeah, my love is better. You should let me love you. Yeah. The makeup on his shirt. <laughs> like, I, do you enjoy being hurt? Because this guy's hurting you, and I won't do that. I've known River. I've known River. Based off a of Langston Hughes poem. Yeah, he just does it like eight times in a row. <laughs> it's so long. It just has that fluttery piano. I've known rivers. Yeah, I guess the nature of it is that it is just repeating this one refrain over and over again with these intricate little differences. And this style of jazz like did pave the way for that more psychedelic brand of jazz. Yeah. It's classic, but it's raw and they're playing with these classical elements in a way that is a little like kind of trippy. Yeah. This song absolutely captivated me. I don't even remember how I found it. I think Gary Bartz used to play in Miles Davis's band. Okay. And I was just kind of like looking up other artists that played with Miles. And I was like, oh, well, this is better than Miles in my opinion. <laughs> I love it. And if you came to our first live show ever in Detroit, me, Grant, and Riley compiled a playlist for that show. But something happened with the sound guy. And I've known Rivers played like nine times before we went on that night. Yeah. And I remember like during the meet and greet and stuff, walking around being like, <laughs> letting Gary Bartz run again, but it was like 40 minutes of Gary Bartz singing this song. And funny enough, we walked out to Let Me Love You by yeah. Mario. That yeah. was our walkout song. That is weird. For that, that show. Super weird. Grant, what took it? Mario. Yeah. I feel like although Mario <laughs> won this round, a lot of people share the sentiment that you share that it is ridiculous that it's in my top 32. It is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, there's a song on the other side that's more ridiculous than it's in it, and I know I'm going to get cooked for it, but I have a defense ready. Okay. The other day I went to a sandwich restaurant with my BDSM crew mm -hmm. for food and drinks. But they were out of subs. Bottomless mimosas it is. That's <laughs> a good one. <laughs> It's a nice one. You got me. They don't usually have mimosas at sandwich shops, <laughs> but it's a little hole in the plot. I can look that. I can look by it. <laughs> Nothing like a submarine sandwich and a mimosa. <laughs>
You got a mimosa to wash this grinder down with? Uh, I got my hoagie, but I'm still waiting on that mimosa. <laughs> All right, on to the second side. You got Your Love is King by Sade versus A Picture of a Tree That Doesn't Look Okay by The World is a Beautiful Place and I Am No Longer Afraid to Die. Oh, two really happy songs. <laughs> Your love is king. Wow. What an album. What a song. What a woman. Sade. What a, what a, what a music. Hmm? That's some, that's what a music. Seven. What, what a music. What a music seven. Oh, are you doing like a now that's what I call music thing? Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like an off brand now that's what I call music. What a music. Seven. Seven. song that's hard to sum up in one little clip yeah. and a song that I think a lot of people who watch us probably don't love off of first listen, but it's within the context of an album yeah. that is just like, it brings you into liking that sound. Yeah, I agree. They're a Midwest emo revival. They're not from the Midwest. I believe they're from Connecticut, but all of the sonic landmarks of Midwest emo kind of reimagined as this big band sound inspired by a lot of indie super groups and stuff. Yeah. So I absolutely love this band and love this album album and I encourage people who even on this listen didn't like it to just check out the whole album. Yeah, that's how I learned to love it was in the context of the whole project. Yeah. What did the fans like, Grant? Sade. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh. Sade. Yeah, they like Sade. Okay. I would say. We'll see. That'd be my guess. It is Sade. Uh, however, it was ridiculously close. Really? 50.6. Sade. Hey now! That is so surprising to me. I thought people would have hated this pick from me. Is that the closest matchup yet? Yeah. Wow. A nail biter. Sade in the fourth quarter drains a floater. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got Birdland by Weather Report versus Dramamine by Modest Mouse. I forgot I put Birdland in here. That's a good call. <laughs> That's a great song. Oh, whoever picked this one. <laughs> glad they put that one in here. Whoa, great pick! <laughs> Yes! If that song doesn't make you happy, I don't know who you are. <laughs> I think it's funny that they're called Weather Report. It sounds like music from the Weather Channel. Kinda, but better. Better, yeah. yeah. Like, it's like a really good elevator ride. Oh, yeah. That's kind of the, the <laughs> vibe awesome I get. Isn't this your floor? You're like, I'm not leaving. <laughs> 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 yeah, Jaco Pastorius's band, greatest bassist of all time, tortured artist, and made some of the happiest sounding music of all time. The kid with the sweatshirt? No, not the kid with the sweatshirt. Oh, sorry. The guy who died in a gutter. <laughs> Another band that I love so much that I could have picked like 25 different yeah. songs. And oddly, this is their first single ever. This really? This is their first single off their first album. It's the one that put them on the map. It's from 1994 or maybe 96. I forget. But it's so weird calling a band's first song their best. Sure. But to me, it's just like, I couldn't decide. Mm. And I think this song is perfect. I love this song too. It's got such a distinct, weird vibe to it. Early Modest Mouse hits me in a different spot than anyone else. Yeah. This was kind of a toss up here. I feel like they're going Modest Mouse. Yeah, they're going to go. I, that's what I think. Okay. What'd they go with, Grant? Yeah, they take Modest Mouse. All right. I mean, that's a beloved song yeah. by Modest Mouse. And I feel like people just don't know Weather Report. Well, yeah, but maybe they just didn't listen to it. Because if they listened to it, it would make them happy. So happy they would probably vote for it. Some people don't want to be happy. Well. <laughs> Drama Mean by Modest Mouse will not make you happy. That's true. It will not. The wallow. If anyone has the rights to Jaco Pastorius's like estate or biopic, I'd love to make it in the future. And yeah, I'm speaking directly to you, the bassist from Metallica. He owns all the rights. Oh, okay. And I want them. He should not have them. You should? Some of them. At least let me make the movie. I feel like I could make a good movie about Jocko's life. What makes you more qualified than the bassist from Metallica? He's an asshole. Do you know that? What if he's a great dad? He probably is a great dad. He kind of <laughs> seems like the kind of guy that'd yeah. be a great dad. All right, now we've got Aretha Franklin Daydreaming versus Pavement Stereo. Two queens of soul. <laughs> hey, baby, let's that flute. 
And this song was on my sex playlist that Spotify made me. Makes sense. Little Sunday morning shagging at like 7 a.m. Then you go back to sleep, wake back up, do it again, back to sleep, wake back up. But I said in that video, the only way that I could get in that mood is if I looked out the window to a shimmery lake in the morning at a lake house. Yeah. Because most of my sex is not this mood. True. Me dreaming and I'm thinking of you. Yeah, it's not. Most of my sex is not that. What's fun. it like? It's much like this next song. Okay. Oh, listen to me. I'm on the stereo. A classic rock jam oh, right there. Oh, God. Maybe my favorite, like, rock song. Like, pure. Yeah. Like, it's an indie rock song from the 90s, but, like, so anthemic, yeah. so cheeky. That verse that's, what about the voice of Getty Lee? Yeah. How did it get so high? <laughs> I wonder if he speaks like an ordinary guy. I've met him. And he does. Yeah. You're my fact checking cuz. It's so goofy. Makes me think of like baggy cargo shorts and like college in the early 2000s kind of vibe. Right. But when you see Stephen Malkmus sing this song, specifically this music video, everybody should go watch it. But like his attitude is just so cool. <laughs> like this dude's in a button up shirt, just kind of like looking around, not taking himself seriously, but writing these like amazing rock songs. And one of my favorite things for, for younger fans, the new Underscores album, the song Locals, Girls Like Us with Gabby Starr, Gabby Start interpolates this song. Oh, yeah, yeah, you showed me that. On his verse, yeah. and it's, like, crazy. I feel like there's too much reverence for the Queen of Soul. Yeah, I mean, it is the song, too. It's just such a beautiful arrangement. I mean, obviously, she has Feel Like a Woman. There's, like, Respect. There's other songs, but Daydreaming is just so beautiful. I feel like it puts you in a dreamlike state, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't be surprised if our fans went rock. I guess we'll see. We'll see. Gee, what was it? Daydreaming moves on. Bing, 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 bing. I needed a win, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, now... We've got Gentle on My Mind by Glenn Campbell versus Dream House by Deaf Heaven. These might be the two most different songs yeah. <laughs> going up against each other all day. My memory, and for hours you're just gentle on my mind. Like a gurgling, crackling cauldron in, in some, some train yard. yard. Wow. Yeah. The picking pattern is just like a locomotive going down the rails, you know? Yeah. He's really spitting on that son of a bitch, too. Absolutely. Yeah. I learned to love this song so much. I think anybody can love it. Yeah. You don't have to like heavy music, no. anything. Like, I remember there's this Pitchfork article about the best songs of the year, and the writer who wrote the little passage about this song, it was like in the top 10 of that year, said that his son, whenever he wants to hear this song, tells him to play the superhero music. Yeah, okay. And like, I thought that was a really interesting way to think about this song, but it is so big. It yeah. gives me chills. Like when I hear it, it gives me chills. And I'm not like a huge black metal fan. Yeah. I know that this is kind of like the black metal band for people who don't like black metal. Sure. But I also, I love shoegaze. That's kind of the other thing that plays yeah. into this album. But I also love the story of it. It's like a text conversation between him and an ex, I think. But it's like, I'm dying. Is it blissful? It's like a dream. I want to dream. And like once you know that he's saying that, you can't unhear it because yeah. it's hard to like hear what he's saying. Right. But this whole album is is amazing. If it's a superhero song, it's Robert Pattinson's Batman. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like grimy, damp, dark Batman. <laughs> I don't think it wins here though. I feel like Glenn Campbell might take it. I don't know. They're so polar opposites. It's gonna say something about the patrons. Yeah. What did they pick, Grant? Close one again. Glenn Campbell moves on. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I think like... It's more listenable. It's more palatable, yeah. yeah. I feel like there's... Some people probably listen to like the first minute of it and we're like, oh, I, I mean, oh. not for me. <laughs> oh. Not for me. Yeah. But I do urge you to give it a full chance because... No, I agree. I wasn't into music that sounded like this when I first heard it. Yeah. And this album is like one of my favorites ever, yeah. so... All right, next we've got Comfortable by Lil Wayne versus Never Bend by O3 Greedo. I don't know which one I like more, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I picked one of them. I picked Comfortable, but... Man, I love both these songs. Get to yeah. God! To the left, to the left. <laughs> I am not Elliot Ness. <laughs> there are a bunch of goofy bars on this oh. song, but I mean, an undeniable groove, a it's, great sample. Yeah, it's the Kanye beat with Wayne. Like, that is a combination we never got enough of. And Babyface. And Babyface, who was just lacing the... What the? People always say you have a baby face. No, they don't. Yeah. I have a grizzled, like, war veterans kind of face. They're always talking about how you have a baby face. 
Go, go, gaga! Because you got an infant chin. Toddler cheeks on that fool. That's what they say. They commented a lot. They say you look like a newborn. You give the vibe of a newborn. I peed my pants yesterday. You've also been weaning off of breast milk for... So hard. Yeah, like a long time. So hard. Yeah. A lot of us got off of it pretty early on. Yeah. You know, first couple years. Mine was so strong. I think that's the problem. The breast milk? Yeah, the breast milk I was dinking on was so strong. It was 40 proof, right? 80. 80 proof? Yeah. Could have ran a two-stroke weed whipper off of it. Yeah. If these walls and pit bars, all of they zombie did hard. Can't play your cards right they get left and start. Oh, that could be like my walkout song if I ever get to fight Bryce Hall. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> it's all about the mood in this song and that bass. Every time I hear Ronda Rousey's name, yeah. I only hear it. <laughs> Knock me out like Ronda Rousey. <laughs> and it's produced by him. And I saw a lot of people making fun of the beat when we first posted this. People were like messaging me. They're like, why the fuck would you put this song in there? There's like a fart bass or whatever. He produced this beat. And it's like the classic case of, it's not like a masterful, like Metro Boomin, everything is in its right place, yeah. perfect beat. But it has something visceral in yeah. it that... The the, the things that are off kilter about it make it knock so much harder than any song. And it feels like Western to yeah. me. Like it has like this weird, and I O3 Greedo is, you know, from California, but yeah. I mean like Western, like a spaghetti Western. <laughs> and he's just such a talented vocalist. He's able to like to hit these melodies in this way that you've seen people like try to capture, like Shorty Shorty tries yeah, yeah. to do it. I feel like YNW Melly brought some of that too. But Greedo is like the OG for that yeah. of West Coast coast hard melodic <laughs> anthems yeah but well, comfortable one there's just no way what'd they pick grant comfortable did win i'm on a high heater i also feel like if we do this as a game where we really guess them yeah i've been pretty good yeah you want to keep going with that i'm gonna keep guessing am i always gonna guess what they pick okay but i'm just saying like i i think i've only gotten like one or two wrong maybe i think you're fully yourself it's not about that i'm no. not doing this as like an ego thing no. i think it'd be a fun game and you could play it with me oh Aren't we all technically full of ourselves? Scientifically, I guess, yeah. Whoa. Biologically, we're all vain as AF. <laughs> and arteries and muscles and bones. If Lil Wayne goes up against Glenn Campbell, I'm cutting my fingers off. <laughs> now we got Mary Jane by Rick James versus If You're Feeling Sinister by Bell and Sebastian. <laughs> Jane. Sends a chill up my spine. I mean, the kind of funk music that could only be fueled by that hard stuff. That ballistic Baltimore boulder. That gargantuan Granville gravel. That south of the border speed demon cement. That Pemberville puppy chow. <laughs> that give it to me Ghanaian granite. <laughs> that ridiculous Rochester rock. That awesome Argentinian asphalt. Yeah, buddy, that's the stuff. <laughs> but if you are feeling sinister, go off and see a minister. He'll try and paint. This one could make me cry. I like this song is so beautiful. I don't even know what to say about it. I'm just glad I got to show it to people. That's nice. People who don't know Bell and Sebastian, like this album, such a unique Scottish twee sound, you know? It didn't win. Pro maybe. Probably not. You're right. What one, Grant? Ricky. Yeah. Rick James? <laughs> I am tearing you up this side of the bracket. That's true. Hey. And you didn't even guess that time. I mean, I, I said it probably didn't win. Sure. About Bell and Sebastian. So, That's fair. It's know, kind of a guess. If you made me guess, I would have said Rick James. But I was too busy crying in my feelings. Yeah, you were crying. Oh, I picked in my feelings next. Kiki, do you love me? Are you riding? Say you'll never ever leave from beside me. What if the next like rest of the bracket was just Kid Cudi songs? You and me both picked just Kid Cudi songs. It's Kid Cudi versus Kid Cudi versus Kid Cudi versus Kid Cudi. Up into the frequency now. <laughs> All of Insano's on here. <laughs> Couldn't choose. I don't know. I had to put the whole album on here. It's not even out yet. <laughs> next, a song for you by Leon Russell versus Hit Me Where It Hurts by Caroline Polachek. <laughs> but now I'm so much better. And if my words don't come Leon Russell's a madman. This is one of the best written songs of all time. Yeah, I like this song. His voice is insane. Uh -huh. You kind of have to look past it. But if you do like just this song, there's a great Donny Hathaway cover of it. Rest in peace, Leon. Saw him open up for Bob Dylan one time. Wow. Yeah, it was awesome. I was a little kid and I was like, this guy looks like a witch. <laughs> <laughs> It's 
like a trap song. Yeah. It's like a trap banger. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorites by her. Yeah, I've had a tough time deciding between Caroline Polachek's songs, too. I think she's made two nearly perfect albums. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. This one just gets me. Yeah. Like, the background vocals, just the pace of it, the lyrics on this one, mm-hmm. too, just, like, feeling like a butterfly trapped inside a plane. I think they picked Caroline here. I think so, too. Yeah. I think they did, but I think it was probably really close. Let's see. It was not close, and it was Caroline. (laughs) Okay. A blowout by (laughs) Polachek. Our fan base loves Caroline. Oh, She's mother. Don't say that. Stop. That's what they say. Oh. They say that she's mother. What am I? (laughs) Daddy. My boy. (laughs) Oh, wait, no, you're baby. You're infant baby face. Whatever works. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. No. Oh, sorry. Got your nose. Yeah. I got your paycheck, and you're not getting it this week. <laughs> now we got If You Want Me to Stay by Sly and the Family Stone versus Wouldn't Mama Be Proud by Elliot Smith. God, I that Elliot Smith album is awesome. Figure eight. Woo! People don't give enough credit to figure eight. And that's probably my favorite song off of it. Oh, I wish I could get the message over to you now. Remember the first time I heard it? Pat Watson's apartment off campus with Hunter Veers. On acid. Thought it was a Stevie Wonder song. And I was like, wait, this is like way more hardcore than anything Stevie's ever done. And I was like, it's not Stevie. It's this cat named Sly Stone. <laughs> he was on PCP. And I was like, I like it. <laughs> Probably one of the songs that you picked that I've heard the most. Yeah. Because our friends, we just listen to this song every time we're together. It's a hitter. It's like 90 seconds, two minutes. Like it's really tight, super syncopated, catchy. But like he recorded all these vocals for this album, like on a little mic in his bed at the end of nights. And it'd be like on a tape recorder. And so it has this like peaking, like really close to you quality that's like pretty unique for this like era of funk music it's not like this big broad thing it's like intimate and kind of like i don't know there's like a weird nightmarish quality to some of sly's music yeah it's really like blocky vocals that's how i've always thought of it it's like really blocky yeah it's strange and like a little uncomfortable at times but then the musicality of it is all just like tight and smooth he's awesome he's crazy and he's living in a trailer in like southern california somewhere and the bassist of sly and the family stone is larry graham She's Drake's uncle. Yeah. Fun fact for for everybody out there. Mm -hmm. Big mustache. Big mustache on most of the Graham family. Yeah, that's true. That's where I got it from. Nope. That's where I got my, that's where my inspiration comes from. Probably the one off here that I've repeat listened to the most. Same with me. I love this whole album, but this is the one I pull off of it and the Elliott Smith song that I listen to the most. Mm -hmm. There are other songs that I think are like maybe more brilliant. That just happens with songwriters like this. Like a sad songwriter will have a song that you think is brilliant, blah, blah, blah. blah. This is the song I listen to the most. And I think the tension at the beginning of this song is really what pulls me in the most. I love that mood from Elliott Smith where he's like, question is wouldn't mama be proud like it's super (laughs) like odd makes you feel kind of odd and pulls you in and then it's a big rock song yeah which he only really did on this album and Mm -hmm. on like the heat miser stuff like this is really when he let it be big and i feel like a lot of people didn't really like i love that one track on heat miser i'm mr Mr. heat Heat miser (laughs) (laughs) just kidding rest in peace elliot smith r.i.p elliot smith i think that elliot smith's song takes it here yeah most likely i think so too it does. All right. And what was the breakdown there? 63% to 37%. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. All right. Here's where I'm going to have to do some defending. No Tears Left to Cry by Ariana Grande mm-hmm. versus Blue and Moody Music by Hiroshi Sato. Yep. Hope I'm saying that right. Yeah, me too. Like all the time, I saw a lot of criticism in my messages. Everybody knew that I picked this song. Nobody thought that you picked it. Good. <laughs> Nobody thought that you picked I'm, it. I've worked a hard, long life to put off the aura that I would not pick this, you know? It's just a perfectly produced pop song. Yeah. It has like five hooks in it. It's like the same reason that I picked Father Stretch My Hands Part 1 over like any other Kanye song. It just feels like a cheat code. Every mm-hmm. time I listen to it, it's just such a great time. You don't have to think about it that much. It's yeah. just produced perfectly. Perfectly. I share a lot of those same sentiments about the Hiroshi song. And I understand the criticism as well, but it's like there's your certain, songs. There's certain pop songs that just yeah. do that to me, and this one more than most. Yeah, they're your songs, man. You don't even have to defend them. They're not my songs. They're Ariana's songs. 
The vocal cut. That's not Hiroshi singing right. for the record. He has a version on this album where he does sing it. Yeah. And it's a little slower and he's almost doing like a like a talk box thing. Yeah, I've heard that version of it. That version's great. Uh -huh. But this one, Wow Wow Wee Wah. I think this is top five of the songs that you picked for yeah. me. Like I really loved this song. Talk about five hooks. Every little melody that's in this just is like incinerated in my brain. It's so good. It's incinerated in your brain? Incinerated. It's yeah. like Incinerated means like, like it blew yeah. up. Yeah. Like it blew up, caught on fire. Blue and muty music. <laughs> muty. <laughs> yeah. If this song loses, you guys were wrong. That's what I'm going to say. I think that Blue and Moody Music won here based off of the criticism for me picking, like, but I'm saying like there's a bunch of people here who have never heard of that song. That's true. Like the more popular song clearly is No Tears Left to Cry. I don't know. It, it's not like a... I don't know. I'm not, I can't call it. You can call I'm it. I'm not the authority on music. This is a one seed versus a 16 seed. Yeah, well... I'm pretty sure. Doesn't matter. It probably upset No Tears Left to Cry. We'll see. Hiroshi moves on. Blue and... Moody, music, hello. That song rocks. And I found that song when we went to New York two years ago. That was when I found it. You remember that in the Airbnb? And when you found your love. Exactly. Coincidence? Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But it's funny how you can find two things you love at the same time. Next, Waking on a Pretty Day, Kurt Vile. Love it. Versus My Ever-Changing Moods by the Style Council. Maybe my weirdest pick. Rising at the crack of dawn. So cool. There was a year where I listened to this song every single day when I woke up. Yeah. Every single, it's nine minutes. I would go, I'd brush my teeth, I'd like get ready, everything, all while this song was playing. It just has this like relaxed, ethereal vibe to it. It's just like sunshine. Yeah. From a guy who is just such an odd character <laughs> in music. And there are plenty of Kurt Vile songs that are like angrier or mm -hmm. weirder or more driving or whatever. But this one is just the palette is perfect. That's even an old country song. It's a, yeah, it's like a, it's a soundtrack song. Yeah. That's like how oh, it soundtracks life. That's mm -hmm. like what I love about this song. And lyrically, I love when he says, says, phone ringing off the shelf. I guess he wanted to kill himself. Philly's own. Just how it's written for me. It's just so cool. You know what it reminds me of? Hmm. Elvis Costello. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's like the, it's the squeaky clean reaction to like kind of the punk era. Yeah. I feel like of like mid to late 80s. Like music to show your mom to in an era where like people were doing like the freakiest stuff. They put on like suits and like gelled their hair and we're like. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like Joe Jackson. Yeah. Did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Joe Jackson was considered like punk, but yeah. was doing like, you can read it in the sun to paper. <laughs> yeah. There's no question. <laughs> yeah. like, and it's like heady lyricism. And like it has this like crescendo of emotion as the song goes on that I feel like inside of that hook just keeps getting like more and more meaningful as yeah. the song goes. And it's just classic in a lot of ways. I don't know. This song really like dug like a little wormhole in my brain mm. and it'll forever have a home. Yeah. This one's a toss up for me. I think Kurt Vile might win. I think so too. On just like recognition of, yeah. you know, people who are younger know who Kurt Vile at least is, mm -hmm. but yeah. probably a close one. Let's see. Kurt Vile moves on. Was it close one? Uh, a little close. Yeah. 54%. Okay. Vile Council beats Style Council. Sorry. Next we got <laughs> Cloud Busting by Kate Bush. Versus Marsupial Superstars by Saw Baby. Yeah. And, fun fact, this was the only song that we both picked. Oh, yeah. Marsupial Superstars was the only song that was on my list and Graydon's list. We couldn't put it in there twice. Mm -hmm. And so Graydon ended up keeping it on his side, and I picked a new song yeah. to fill that that gap. But it's funny to me that of all of the music that we both love, <laughs> the one crossover is a ridiculous Saw Baby song. Yeah. I mean, for both of us, it has so much nostalgia at yeah. play. We found it together. Yeah, we found it together. And in the first vlog ever, I believe you can hear it featured on a boat party. <laughs> yeah, Danny's <laughs> yeah. fancy boat. Putting Bay. Yeah, Putting Bay, baby. And we were putting them back at the bay. Facts. Beers. Chicken wings, too. We, did, we ate a lot, a lot of wings that night. <laughs> a lot of wings. Let's bust on the clouds. Makes me want to like 
you know, wet t-shirt kind of like stomping around in a room. You know what I mean? Where there's like a thin layer of water on the mm-hmm. floor. So when you stomp, like water comes up. It's kind of like a dark, moody purple background. Yeah, I was yep. thinking the exact same yeah, thing. Yeah, the same thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. That song. It's awesome. Impossibly good. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, I could have put Withering Heights on here. Sure. I could have put A Deal With God, Running Up The Hill. I, I really think that, that song got like played out by Stranger Things. Sure. But like, that's a perfect song too. Fuck Stranger Things anyway. Stranger Things is a great show. Fuck it. All right. <laughs> What's up, Vecna? Takes me right back there. Ugh. Takes me right back to my youth. Who thinks of this? No. How, I don't does, know. how did he think of this? How did he think of this melody? I want to be with my booty. Uh. <laughs> I want to fucking amphibian. <laughs> Just an amazing song. So you can say it's innovative, but like nothing came after it that sounds even similar. The only thing you could say is like Young Thug yeah. is like that adventurous with delivery. Sure. It's outlandish in so many ways. It's outlandish lyrically. Yeah. I mean, it even like dips its way into problematic territory. There are lines on here that are straight up problematic, but just the feeling of the song and how goddamn weird Saw Baby seems to be. Yeah. It's euphoric. It's like transcendent, (laughs) you know? What one, Grant? It's Kate Bush. Kate Bush. But just saying it could even make it happen. Next we've got For No One by The Beatles. Versus Sugar and Spice by <laughs> Luther Vandross. <laughs> Just imagine if Luther is in the Beatles. <laughs> and I picked the Beatles song here. Correct. This one might not be as clear as yeah, the other ones. That's but true. Yeah. I picked For No One, deciding between a few Beatles songs, but... Same for me with Luther. I could have put four or five on here, but this one... One, I knew it would strike a chord with you. Yeah, I love this song. And this is like the most fun song of his. Yeah. No sign of love behind the tears. This song has such range to it because mm-hmm. it's, it's a beautiful ballad, but it also has like some musical theater elements yeah. to it. Never do you hear, I mean, not never, but it's like a rare moment in the Beatles discography where you hear something delivered like a love that should have lasted years. Yeah. It really feels like it's leading into like the next scene, mm-hmm. you know? Paul's writing the harpsichord yeah. that gets introduced in there. It's awesome. Who does a cover of this? Sean Mendez. Elliot Smith. There you go. Elliot Smith does a cover of this song. Nice. Sugar and spice. Oh God. Every day. Oh yeah. Yeah, this song is another one that I just picture our friends dancing yeah. around. It's just like, how does he hit all those spaces with his vocals? Yeah. It's like the only person I can even think that like fills those kind of spaces in a song with just their voice is like MJ. Like he hits a melody and then there's a background melody and then there's like a counter melody and then it's into the hook and he's just like, this song is so fun. It's so fun. <laughs> it's it's so, electric. But it's electric. I do think it lost here. Probably. It's hard to beat the Beatles. Grant, what do we got? Beatles moves on. Close or no? 51.7%. Luther almost took down the big boys. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of Beatles hate. There's some people that sure. probably just voted against the Beatles because they don't, they think they're overrated or something. Yeah. But I also think it's good that you infiltrated our fan base with the sugar and spice. Yeah. I feel like our fan base now has a party song. Yeah, they, they needed know. it. <laughs> now we've got scenes from an Italian <laughs> restaurant by Billy Joel. Versus Sitting on Top of the World by Doc Watson. <laughs> Meet you anytime you want in our Italian bed. I'll never understand why you love this song so much, but I, <laughs> I like it. It's a good song. But your affinity for this track is it's a bit bizarre. It's, it's the just... first song I added to the playlist when I knew oh, we were of course. doing this. I was like, oh, well, I'm going to grab scenes from an Italian <laughs> restaurant and then we'll go from there. But I mean, it's like my mom loves this song. Yeah. It's kind of like the first song I loved with my mom, sure. you know? And I feel like that's special, but also it's very musical theater. It's scenic. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> I'd say it's so. Scenes from Italian restaurant, but you know, whatever. It has a lot of different parts to it. Again, any clip, you know, yeah. like is going to sound very different. It sounds like a carnival at the end. Yep. <laughs> There's a part where it's just a hard rock song. It's like render and nitty. We're both going <laughs> steady <laughs> in the summer <laughs> of '75. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a lot of cool things about it. It's like my Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, that's fair. The Lord, I'm sitting on top of. In a bag, putting it on a stick, yeah, and running away type tune. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> no one's ever gonna get me. I change my name, shave my hair, and I get a tattoo over my whole face. Yeah, I kind of picture like a movie where we've got like you know a Brad Pitt or Leonardo DiCaprio or like maybe a Jude Law type okay. of character <laughs> getting in a car and like it's a stressful situation broadly. But yeah. in the moment, you can tell he's not worried about yeah. it and he's just <laughs> driving and there's nothing on either side of the road. It's like yeah. in the desert and he's got. 
sunglasses on and he's like a little dirty and he's mm -hmm. got everything he owns in one rickety old car running away from something but you can tell in that moment he ain't worried about it. Yeah. I mean, really carrying the banner of like Dust Bowl folk, like that original yeah. Americana singer songwriter stuff. I'm not even 100% sure if Doc wrote this song. This might be like an American traditional, but it's just such an interesting moment in American music that I think has lasting impact. And Doc is a great torchbearer for that. I don't um, think it won though. I think Billy Joel probably won here. Off fun. Off fun and <laughs> off name recognition. That's true. For sure. What won it, Grant? Billy Joel wins handedly. Handedly. He had to rub it in. A lot of people know that that's one of the best songs of all time. A lot of people know that. <laughs> up next, Kid Cudi. Yep, Kid Cudi's up next. Again, <laughs> Pursuit of Happiness versus Day and Night. Oh, close call. I picked Day and Night. <laughs> I picked Pursuit of Happiness. <laughs> Mostly because the movie. Next, we've got Kill V. Mame by Grimes versus Party Down, part one by Little Beaver. That's awesome. <laughs> No other song on this bracket has this mood. I'll say that. God, no. And this music video is unbelievable, as are most of Grimes' music yeah. videos. Say what you will about Grimes, but just yeah. musically, especially Art Angels, to me, is just incredible, forward-thinking, weird pop music. And this one... It's awesome. Unbelievable. Still dancing to it. Get chills. Yeah. Really get some chills. I just, every single time, I think of Bobby Caldwell singing yeah. it with you. Yeah, one of the best moments of my life. That was unbelievable. For those of you who didn't see that interview, Little Beaver was on Bobby Caldwell's uh, same record label. Yeah. And when we got the chance to interview him, I brought it up. I was like, oh, I found out Beaver was on TK Records with you. And he was like, how old are you? <laughs> He's like, how do you know <laughs> Little Beaver? He's he like, like, Little Beaver's what brought me to TK. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember how I came across this. It might have been another Hunter find, but this record is so slept on. This era of music, this stuff's so cool. He's so good at guitar. This song is amazing. And to sing that with Bobby is... Something I'll never forget. Rest in peace, Bobby Caldwell. I do think Grimes won this one. Probably, yeah, it would make sense. What won it, Grant? Grimes moves on. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's all right. All right, and next, we got a classic matchup. We've got Young Lean, Red Bottom Sky, versus Roy Hargrove, Strasbourg slash St. Saint Denis. There you go. Saint Den I don't know. Whatever. You're French. French. It's a French neighborhood. Saint Saint Denis. Saint Denis. Eyes dropping, red bottom sky, three by the moment. Now, I'm not sure if you guys know this or if you picked up on this. This is like a reggae song. Yeah, I picked up on it. It's like a dub song. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah. You it's, don't like it, I can tell. It's my least favorite song in here. Really? Yeah, by far. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised by that. Yeah. I love this song. There's, uh, I don't want to say I like don't like it, but it's the dub aspect of it that makes me feel weird. Why? I don't know. It's Young Lean. <laughs> He's from Sweden. Yeah, exactly. It's the home of reggae. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I don't know. It's just what this song's about, yeah. plus this vibe for him. I like when Young Lean sings. Yeah. I mean, I like when Young Lean raps, too. I mean, my other favorite Young Lean song is Hennessy and Sailor Moon. Yeah. This one, though, it's just, it's like a really unique point in his career where a lot of stuff had gone wrong, and he was kind of coming back, and he was talking about, like, being in the mental hospital, yeah. and I like the way he talks about that on yeah. this song. But I also just am addicted to that melody and that, like, swing that it has. Yeah. You have a, you have a soft spot for reggae sometimes. Mostly when it's Mad Cobra. Yeah. <laughs> It's my favorite modern jazz song of all time. Probably the greatest horn player since Louis Armstrong, maybe Miles. It's unbelievable. It's got my favorite piano solo. It's one of the best live performances of all time. It's just got such a good groove. All of Roy's music was so good. Rest in peace, Roy Hargrove, an absolute legend. I like some of the RH Factor stuff more yeah. than this. This is a little bit background music for me. It's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Like, I don't dislike it or anything, but it's not one that like really stuck with me. Yeah. It's not really my style of jazz yeah. that I end up it's liking. Clean. It's a little too like clean and normal. It yeah. just has like the vibe of like this song is being played and it's impressive. But yeah, it's the not, RH Factor I mean, yeah. will get more like neo soul. Get it's a little more like, like it's more of a song. Like it's yeah. more of a you know a vibe and like a yeah. This is a jazz song solo 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 with some hook in there yeah i feel like young lean won this oh, one yeah. for he, sure probably 90 percent. what was it g young lean did win with 54.6 percent. hey i 
feel like there's a few factors at play. One is that you did put people on to music more than I did. There's definitely yeah. a lot more people who watch us who know the songs that I picked mm -hmm. than the songs that you picked. But I also think there's a lot of people rooting for you. That's fair. In that, yeah. because <laughs> they know of that dynamic. They yeah. know the split. Yeah. And so there's a lot of people who want to see your songs move on. Yeah. And you either like Young Lean or you don't. So there's some people who just don't like Young Lean. Fair. Whether this song stuck with them or not, the yeah. Roy, the Roy song, they vote against Young Lean. Yeah, and yeah. I paid for a lot of Patreon subscriptions from my friends to go on and vote for my songs. That's good. Yeah, cool. Thousands. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Only a few of them did it, but yeah, I am bankrupt morally and financially. And? Young Lean moves on. Yeah, sorry, Roy. Yeah. And last one in the first round. Oh, <laughs> we got Feel No Ways by Drake versus Can I Sleep in Your Arms Tonight by Willie Nelson. Two songs I'll listen to when I'm sad. I'll listen to Feel No Ways yeah, whenever. Any, yeah, true, it doesn't anytime. matter when, you know? And this is another one, you know, did not win our Drake bracket. Not going to say what did, but it actually didn't make it out of the first round of the Drake bracket, this song, yeah. and is my favorite Drake song. So I had to plug it in here. Yeah, shout out uh, the Drizzy. <laughs> and I will say I did a tough time not including Wesley's Theory, yeah. Kendrick Lamar. But because we'd already done that bracket, there was a few that we'd already done brackets that I decided just to like exclude in favor of other songs, but feel no ways because it lost in the first round. I had to show it the love. Yeah. And now you're trying to make me feel away on purpose. Drake himself said it's one of his best songs he's ever made. It really is. And I feel like it hits three different demographics. It hits Drake haters will concede this song's good. Yeah. People who are like on the fence about Drake, this is one of their favorites. And Drake stands. Yeah. This is one of their contenders for best Drake song. I think even the people who just really want to hear Drake rap will admit that this song has everything. You know, it sounds like a blood orange instrumental. Yeah. I sure you I'll do you no wrong. I mean, it's just a sad Willie Nelson song. Yeah. Redheaded Stranger is like one of my favorite albums of all time. Just the concept of it is so strong. Might even be early 80s. Everybody's doing like a clean style of country and Willie just goes to a cabin and plays one guitar and it's just this raw conceptual country album. And it came out as the demo. The record label didn't approve it. It wasn't even done. He just released it. And it's like one of the best ever. He's a great storyteller. The harmonies, it's so gentle, it's so sweet. It's perfect. It's what I love about country music. I mean, I think there's a chance at one. I think Drake, well, there's a lot of Drake haters. That's true, There's yeah. a lot of Drake haters, and there's a lot of people who think it's really funny if Willie Nelson beat Drake in the first round. That's true. I do think Drake probably took it, but I think it's a narrow margin. Yeah, I think for those reasons you said about Feel No Ways, it's that song that does cross boundaries for Drake haters and Drake fans. Yeah. I think that's what's going to make it win, but... Let's see it. Grant, what one? Drake moves on. Big time. 58.9. Okay. Okay. Not yeah. bad for Willie. Well, that's the first round. So you've heard all the songs or clips of them. If you're a patron, you heard all the songs. Mm -hmm. Thank you to everybody who voted. Now we are not going to play clips of them anymore, and we're not going to talk about them as much. We're right. just going to move through it. We're going to find out. There's going to be a winning song. And again, if you'd like to vote on stuff like this in the future, join. Patreon. We have some ideas, some cool ideas for how to get you guys involved in voting for brackets in the future. Mm -hmm. We will obviously still be doing brackets where we pick yeah. that will enrage you, of course, but we have some ideas of ones like this. So yeah. uh, join the Patreon. It's linked in the description. Thank you. Let's get into the second round. Come on. It's going to be a lot of singing from now on. Yeah. All right. We've got Kendrick Lamar Fear versus Svenji Englar by Sigur Rós. Go ahead. Start us off with the singing. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good, man. And? I'm high now! Right. Yeah. I'm guessing Kendrick took this one pretty easily. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of love for Seeger Rose. Definitely, but Kendrick is, is the GOAT. Yeah, and this song is just... It's a great song. Really love it. What one, Grant? Kendrick sweeps. Yes! Well, I don't know why I'm that happy. I love Seeger Rose, too. I'm just trying to animate for the video, you know? And you got to root for your songs. That's, that's what we want. Yeah. We wanted to get, you know, these are our favorite songs of all time. Yeah. We can be passionate. Yeah, of course. Know? I'm going to be. And now we got two of yours. We got Simple <laughs> Twist of Fate and Outstanding. Now, this is interesting. They're two of mine. Yeah. I don't care which one wins. I am interested to see which one you guys like more because I feel like I've spent a lot of time putting people on to folk kind of stuff and jazz, funk music, kind of like the Gap Band and stuff. I even came into a little later. And so I've been late to even put people on because I'm still kind of discovering it. Yeah, I don't think the Gap Band wins here. Just Bob Dylan name recognition. And yeah. I feel like it would just hit with people. But maybe. I mean, yeah. it is a really catchy, fun song. Yeah. So. Ah! 
not standing. Ooh, you knocked me out. Do 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 do. What one, Grant? Bob. Yeah. All right, now two of mine. We've got uh, Cocteau Twins Ice Blink Luck versus Alex G Powerful Man. Oh. Where would you go? You had to listen to one, and the other one's gone forever. I'd take Powerful Man narrowly. Yeah, same. Because I think there's other Cocteau Twins songs that I can get that same feeling from, yeah. and Powerful Man is a very singular Alex mm -hmm. G song. There aren't any others like that. I agree. And I know there are like some on that album, like you know Bobby or Proud. As far as my guess, I think fans take Alex G. I think they might take Cocteau Twins. Okay, let's see. Cocteau Twins moves on. Oh. Okay. Narrowly. 52.3. Very narrowly. Yeah. And twins. Are they actually twins? I don't know. I don't really know much about them. Yeah, neither do I. There's some music that I really love that I leave like very happily a mystery. A lot of people don't know what they're saying. There's some songs I definitely don't know what they're saying. Yeah. And I don't really care. No, it's a vibe. You know, it's like Secret Rose. It's yeah. like, I don't know what they're saying. No one does, actually. <laughs> some people do. Yeah. But if you know like Icelandic, French, and English, yeah. you can maybe figure it out. I only catch like an English word every once in a while. And yeah. Yeah. Sing a Rose song where it's like, oh, he just said kisses. How about that? That's <laughs> interesting. But Cocteau Twins, I mean, they're speaking English from what I can tell. Yeah. And I don't know what they say. Back to a you versus me matchup. We've got I Don't Smoke by Mitski versus Mercy, Mercy Me by Marvin Gaye. Wow. And you said you were going to be pissed if Marvin Gaye loses. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, it's just perfect music. I would understand either way. I think they might have taken Mitski on this I think one, so, though. too. That's I kind of how I feel. Grant, what do they take? Marvin Gaye blows Mitski out of the water. Oh. Oh. Nice. How about that? All right. Respect to the classics. Absolutely. That's great to see. Marvin Gaye can be appreciated by anyone. Your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your son, the mayor and the criminal, your cat and your dog. <laughs> Father Stretch My Hands Part 1 versus Head Over Heels by Tears for Fears. <laughs> Both my picks. Yeah. I think Kanye <laughs> handily takes this one for our fan base. This is an awesome matchup, though. Something happens and I'm head over heels. All right, what one? Kanye takes it. Yeah. 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 Now we got Mine versus Yours. Hive by Earl Sweatshirt. Crying, laughing, loving. Lying. <laughs> Bobby Seffrey. Well, I started my morning listening to this album, and I just thought to myself, yeah, it's, it's good music. Promise hair, Ron, I put my <laughs> fist up after I get my dick, dick sucked. sucked. Quick buck. Bobby would never say that. Maybe a gold chain. He might say that. Bobby Seffrey wrote the best gay love songs. He was secretly gay. It wasn't cool at the time. This album came out in 1972. He was mm. a gay black British guy. That's awesome. Yeah, I have nothing to say about that. No, like, I don't want you to. Yeah. I'm just letting everyone know. Right. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. Forbidden love in the 70s. But Earl Sweatshirt can fucking rap. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's for sure. <laughs> what one here, Grant? Earl. Yeah. And now we've got Idiotech versus Digital Love. I'm not going to lie. I woke up this morning with Digital Love in my head. Last night, I, I had, had a dream about you. I was like, God you. damn it. He got me again. In this dream, <laughs> we're dancing, dancing right beside, beside you. you. I hope it wins here, honestly. This could be my final two. Like, yeah. this could be my, like, if I did a bracket of just 32 of my songs, like, this could be my final two. But I do think Idiotech is just like a cooler pick for our fan base. Yeah, we'll see, though. What won it, Grant? Daft Punk. Oh, really? Narrowly? 54.2. Oh, not even that close. Wow, okay. It's just more fun. I feel like there's people out there that aren't like Radiohead fans. There's more like accessible Radiohead songs. Like for me, like In Rainbows this is my favorite project because they're just more listenable songs. I mean, my second favorite Radiohead song is All I Need. Yeah. Off of In Rainbows. Yeah. But I mean, also like Weird Fishes. There's a yeah. lot of songs on In Rainbows that I love. And I see where you're coming from, but I think a lot of people acknowledge like the yeah. genius and the listenability of Idiotech. That's fair. Last one on this <laughs> side. <laughs> Two of mine. We've got uh, One of These Things First by Nick Drake versus Let Me Love You by Mario. These are two wedding songs. One's at the reception. Yeah. What do you think won here? I think Nick Drake won. I think Mario won. Baby, you said let me, me love, love you. you. Let me be the one to... What won it, Grant? Mario! Ha-ha! <laughs> okay, I've been wrong <laughs> twice in a row. Mario! Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Next side, we've got Sade versus Modest Mouse. This would be an awesome, like, uh, what do they call it when the rappers do their hit? A, a versus. A versus. This would be a versus battle, right? Here. Sade versus Modest Mouse. Fuck yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah, they come out with Float On and Sade returns with. Uh, Maybe like Lovers Rock. Sade's one of those people, though. It's scary. She's only getting better looking. 
Same with Isaac Brock. Yeah. From Modest Mouse. That is weird. They're just both getting hotter with age. Yeah. It's creepy. It's weird, isn't it's it? It's spooky. Weird, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I think Modest Mouse squeaks by. I don't think so. For this reason. I think it's really stylish to like Sade. Yeah, there's a lot of people who probably are like, well, it's cooler if I say Sade. Even yeah. I like drama mean more. I love both these songs and I like Sade before it was stylish, obviously. Ah, right, so. right. But I think it's like a really like kind of sexy thing to be like really into Sade. Day. That's fair. I could see it going either way. It's not sexy to be that into Modest Mouse. It's no. kind of creepy. No, actually, they say yeah. it's like a red flag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's something yeah. like that. Whatever that means. Like a girl is telling her friends about a guy she's dating, and she's like, well, he's really into like Radiohead and Modest Mouse. And they're, they're like, oh! They're like, oh, run for the hills. Yeah. <laughs> what one, Grant? Sade. Yeah. Big one? 54%. Okay. A modest win for Sade. <laughs> and now we've got Aretha Franklin daydreaming versus Glenn Campbell, gentle on my mind. Don't tell me one lost. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Glenn Campbell lost. I don't know, man. Gurgling, crackling, cauldron in some train. I mean, yeah, it's great. We Aretha it. never said that. That's true. Aretha <laughs> didn't say that. But Aretha is the queen of soul. Yeah, one of the best vocalists of all time. People would feel guilt. Yeah. Clicking Glenn Campbell. They would. Over Aretha Franklin. A they white just guy. would. Yeah. yeah, a white guy is sitting there going, well, like, I guess I gotta say Aretha, right? <laughs> Shit. What was it, G? Aretha. Big time. Yeah, 74.9. Yeah, yeah, see, that's the white guilt that's right there. That's a lot of guilt. <laughs> that's a lot, a of, guilt, lot yes. of guilt. But a great song. Great song. Yeah. I put it in there for a reason, because I'm guilty. Another of <laughs> yours versus yours. Yep. We've got Lil Wayne Comfortable versus Rick James' Mary Jane. I'm not going to lie. It's not even close. It's Lil Wayne. Yeah. And I, I love Rick James and I needed some power funk representation in here. And Mary Jane's awesome. I just think his vocals on that are insane. But Comfortable is like the perfect rap song. But Rick James was fueled by that jubilant Jamaican gemstone. <laughs> he was. But who's saying Lil Wayne wasn't? Lil Wayne is saying that. Lil Wayne said he was fueled strictly by the mud. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The That's... serp. Scissor. Serp. You're good, man. Okay. Good. Yeah. I think Wayne wins here. I mean, yeah, I think so too. What one, Grant? Lil Wayne. Yeah, I'm happy either way. Not gonna make me uncomfortable. Shut up. I can. Okay. <laughs> See? No, oh, you seem to like it. <laughs> it was cool with me. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Now it's mine versus mine. We've got Caroline Polachek, Hit Me Where It Hurts, versus Elliot Smith, Wouldn't Mama Be Proud? I feel like our fans are fans of both these artists, respectively. I just don't think it's a popular pick for yeah. an Elli fa favorite Elliot Smith song. I'm wondering if the Elliot Smith fandom carries it over, because I do think we have more Elliot Smith fans than we have Caroline fans. Probably. He's probably a bigger artist in general. His music's been around a lot longer. Caroline has two albums. I'm gonna guess they went with Elliot Smith, but like, I'm not confident. I I'm going like to guess could Caroline. Be, could be close. So what did the fans pick, Grant? Caroline moves on. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. I kind of feel like a similar factor is at play there with Sade. Super cool to be a big Caroline Polachek fan right now. No one's going to argue that. And uh, I remember I was seeing a girl recently. I was in the car. We were just like playing music back and forth, picking songs. I started playing an Elliott Smith song and she grabbed my phone and changed it and said I made a pact with myself that I would never let a guy play Elliott Smith in front of me. She's like, it's just a bad vibe. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's, but that's like a rule that yeah. she was holding for herself. And respect to her, queen. But, queen you slay. know, <laughs> queen slave. Her, as um, you should. But I wasn't even allowed to talk about Elliot Smith. It was interesting. Mm. Didn't work out. No, I felt like I was in a cage. The <laughs> All I could think about was Elliot. Elliot, <laughs> Elliot. All right, now we got Hiroshi Sato, Blue and Moody Music, versus Waking on a Pretty Day, Kurt Vile. <laughs> this is a good battle. Neither artist is huge, huge. No. I don't know. I feel like this is the most like equal battle yet for whatever reason. It depends if they're trying to chill or they're trying to like... Dance around in a white dress. Yeah, dance yeah. around in a white dress. Yeah. Exactly. Window goes from night to day. That's all I'll say. Waking in the <laughs> dawn of day. Gotta think about what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say Kurt maybe takes this one narrowly, but uh, I don't know. I'm yeah. gonna say Hiroshi. I think the groove is too undeniable. Hiroshi moves on. Yeah. Okay. I That's a song that like you can probably confidently show 99% of the people you meet and they've never heard it. And I would bet it would become one of their favorite songs of like at least the next week or something. Yeah. Another me versus me matchup. We've got Kate Bush cloud busting versus the Beatles for no one. Oh man. Hard for me to pick against for no one because I do think that song's perfect. Yeah. But it's like, there's a lot of Beatles songs I really like. And there's probably like five Kate Bush songs I love. Yeah. 
I mean, current day, I'd rather listen to cloud busting, but that hasn't always been true. And yeah. I feel like I hold for no one to Closer. a really high regard. And I also think this is kind of a popular Beatles song for people to say is their favorite. Like off of Revolver, it's probably the most popular in that way. It's yeah. not the most popular at all, but it's the most popular in that way for people to be like, that's my favorite Beatles yeah. song. Yeah, I say Beatles win here. I think Kate Bush wins here, okay. but ah, uh, ah. Uh, hey, it's not up to us. That's true. It's not up to us, but I want to be right. Well, yeah, I've been wrong a lot in the second round, so I wanted to get a win. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say Kate Bush. What do we got, Grant? Kate Bush moves on. Was it close? 50.1%. Ow! Oh! By the skinnier bush. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. <laughs> we were right to deliberate that way because yeah. obviously a lot of people did the same thing. By the hair on your crotch, it moves on. Okay. That's yeah. what a bush is, I Riley. Know, I know, I understand. A bush is big pubic hair. <laughs> Another one of <laughs> mine, we got Billy Joel, Scenes from an Italian Restaurant versus Kill V, Main by Grimes. I think Billy takes it here. Oh, I don't. I think Grimes wins. It might be a better song to a lot of people. It's kind of a toss up for me. Actually, no, I like the Grimes song more. I lied to you guys, sorry. <laughs> I think there's a sick satisfaction kind of on the flip side of how people felt guilty not voting for Aretha. I think they are proud to vote against Billy Joel. I think a lot of people are proud to vote against Grimes. She was married to Elon Musk. Everybody hates Grimes now. Really? Yeah. I think that's sick. I mean, sure, you can think whatever you want about it. I'm Elon's just like you. a genius. He's going to save the planet. Ah, uh, great, great, great. He's going to take yeah. us to Mars. Awesome, bro. awesome. Yeah, Have you seen amazing. the Cybertruck? It's actually sick. Yeah. Guess Joe Rogan great. shot it with a bow and arrow. Yeah. Yeah. He smoked blunts on there, too. This is why I try not to bring up certain things around you. Because the I'm boring company, about... dude, is going to like build a tunnel to Las Vegas. Oh, a hyper God. tube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. SpaceX, flamethrower. Come on, he's done tons of cool stuff. Yeah, I can't. Tons of babies. I can't relate to that. Hella babies. Yeah, he's got a lot of babies, but... I, I can't relate to South this. African diamond money. Yeah, a lot of people don't. I'm just telling you that the internet does not really like Grimes these uh. days. They would be happy to vote against her. I also think you have some sort of weird, twisted hate for the Billy Joel song. <laughs> <laughs> and it's messed up because if you just let yourself loose, you'd realize it's just one of the best songs of all time. Yeah. And I think it smacked the fuck out of the Grimes song in this round. I think Grimes won. What did, Grant? Billy moves on. Okay. Battle the rhythm. And then battle the way. It all depends upon your appetite. Stop, dude. I'm withstanding from drinking. And <laughs> you saying red and white. <laughs> Don't say any colors or froth or cold or crisp sipper. Don't say that stuff. It's triggering. I'll meet you anytime you want. There you go. That's fine. At our Italian restaurant. Ooh, don't say restaurant. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Last one is another one, Me versus Me. And we've got Young Lean, Red Bottom Sky versus Drake, Feel No Ways. I think this might be the biggest win here. You think Feel No Ways one handedly over I the Young Lean song? Almost 69% Drake is my prediction. I'm going to start guessing the numbers. I think Drake won here, but I think it's going to be kind of close because okay. this is a very beloved Young Lean song. True. And our fan base loves Young Lean. That's true. What was it, G? Drizzy. Big time? 57.3. Yeah. Way closer than I thought. I told you it'd be closer, for sure. The two things I'm surprised most by sitting here with you yeah. is your disdain for the Young Lean song and your distaste for the Billy Joel song. It's not really about the Billy Joel song. It's about your love for it. See, and that's, I thought we were past that. <laughs> we are pals, for sure. Yeah, we're I friends. didn't say pals. I yeah, said no, I thought no, no, we were I mean, past like, that. Like, we're boys. Like, I totally. Yeah. I thought we were past that point in our relationship where you held some sort of resentment for things that I love just based on the fact that I love them. No, but it's how you love it. It's how you love it. It's so... Oh, because I love my mom? Yeah, mostly that. I mean, that is just so lame. I don't think it's about that I love my mom. Yeah. I think it's about that my mom loves me. Well, my mom loves me. It's about how she loves you. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, fuck Billy Joel and you to death. <laughs> <laughs> All right, third round. Even less talking and less <laughs> clips of the song. We get to sing two words from the song. That's it. Fear versus simple twist of fate. Oh! Yeah, that's a tough one for you. Shit, man. I think Kendrick wins. Roll that motherfucker up. <laughs> well one, Grant. Kendrick. Yeah. I should have put another Bob song in there. Promise that you will sing about me. <laughs> Man, Kendrick could use a little more harmonica. Well, the hillbillies, you know. Let's see. Country raps in right now, too. All right, Cocteau Twins, Ice Blink Luck versus Marvin Gaye, Mercy, Mercy Me. It's an even easier matchup for Marvin this round, I think. Yeah, I think Marvin takes this one pretty handedly. Just recognition. I mean, Cocteau Twins are sweet, but Marvin's impact on the world is like... 
permanent. I also want to say, I don't know if you're pronouncing Cocteau Twins right or if I am. What do I say? You said Cocteau Twins. I That's said Cocteau I say, yeah. Twins. I just do the E-A-U is O to me, like Bureau. I guess in Bureau, yeah, you're right. So I always say Cocteau Twins. And I say Cocteau. But I'm it's assuming like there will be people correcting both of us yeah. on opposite sides because nobody hope, knows. I hope they fight. Physically. Marvin Gaye won here, I assume, Grant? Yes, Marvin moves on. Okay. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. My taste is better. I'm just kidding, dude. You have great taste. Thanks, man. For such a low-class individual, you have great fucking taste. These, like, intellectual rich thugs I hang out with, they don't know good taste of it. Hit them in the lips. Right. But you, coming from, like, the dirt and, like, Shitsville, USA, it's amazing that, like, you have such refined taste. Oh, you know what I would want right now? <laughs> well, refried beans. Corn dog. Oh, yeah. I could slurp down a bucket of refried beans right now. Bologna. I love bologna. Yeah. Just a lot. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's fresh. It's my favorite meat. <laughs> it's up there for it's me. It's definitely top one. Yeah. Ham. Me. It's top one for me. Ham is Ham's number, number, number two. Ham's, Ham's number two one for, for me. me. Bologna's too. Yeah, honey baked ham's number two for me. Yeah, anything sugar on a pig. Mm. Sugar pig meat. You know what else I like? Tic Tacs. <laughs> Tic Tacs, yeah. yeah. Watch I them like... at night before I go to sleep. Nice. Other things that I like really cool. Digimon. Quick. I fucking love that yeah, show, Yeah, Digimon. Dude. Digimon. Yeah. I thought it was better than Pokemon, honestly. Yeah, me too. You know what else I like? Friends. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, uh, mm -hmm. Rest in peace to Matt Perry. We yeah. haven't said it enough. Rest in peace to Matthew Perry. I like Friends more yeah. than Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm and Always Sunny and Lost in Ink Master. You know what I've been really digging lately? What? Cinnamon toothpaste. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like charcoal gum. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Gray gum. Clean, clean your teeth. Yeah, gray gum. Yeah, I like that. Cool. You know what I like? Hmm. Getting mail from the government. Low key, exciting. It reaffirms that I have a place here in this country. Yeah, I yeah. like it. I like it. And it reminds me that I'm not a felon. You know who else I really, really appreciate? What's up? People who work at music venues that take their job way too seriously and yell at people. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I love when somebody's like, don't get in line over there. You're over here. Yeah. I like Someone's got to keep the order. What are we going to have? Just... Everybody running around? People who slam stuff at the airport at TSA. I like all those things, too. Those are things I like. Yeah. These are a few of my favorite things. Uh, speaking of two of your favorite things, we got Father Stretch My Hands Part 1 by Kanye West and Hive by Earl Sweatshirt. I think Kanye took it here. I don't know. Actually, it's probably pretty close because I also think a lot of people just don't like Kanye right now, understandably so. Yeah. I think right now you got two great rap songs going up against each other and you have no reason to really hate Earl and you have reason to not vote for Kanye. Despite if people like the song or not, I think people will be more outspoken for the Earl song. I kind of feel like, and this is maybe going to sound a little crazy, Ugh. Father Stretch My Hands Part 1 kind of lives outside of Kanye. People like love that song so much. And I know there's so much personality, like Kanye mm -hmm. personality on that song. Like, I know what you're it's, saying, It's though. like weird that I'm saying that my favorite Kanye song is the one where he says, if I fuck this model and she just bleached her asshole. Like that's something only Kanye says. Yeah. But it knocks so hard, people just treat it like something else and I feel like they would vote for it regardless of how they feel about Kanye West the man. Well let's see what they chose. What was it Grant? Kanye West. Yeah. Was it a big one? 51%. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, oh oh Ooh. Now we've got Digital Love, Daft Punk, Let Me Love You, Mario. <laughs> These are guilty pleasure songs to a degree. To a degree. Daft Punk has the layers and the musicality and some brilliance, more brilliance I would venture to say than the Mario song. And Daft Punk also has a catalog right. that makes none of their songs feel like guilty pleasure. That's true. Yeah. You know, like people, they're so respected that yeah. people, even a song like this that has the sugary vocals, they still love. Yeah, it has the, the character of the rest of their catalog. I think it wins handedly here. I think so too. What won it, Grant? Daft Punk. Yeah. Sade versus Aretha Franklin. Two queens of the industry, two beautiful voices, two beautiful women. Hot take. Go ahead. I think Sade wins this one. I don't think that's that hot of a take. I think the musical palette of Sade's songs and especially anything off Diamond Life has like more of an appeal to probably our patrons. Aretha is, you know, there's no like electric bass in there. There's a fucking flute. Right. There's a fuck damn flute in there. I'm going to say Sade won. What happened, Grant? Aretha Franklin moves on. Okay. Thank y'all for proving me wrong. That's okay. cool. Hey, we were wrong. It is a more complex song. I will say that. All right, Lil Wayne Comfortable versus Caroline Polachek, <laughs> Hit Me Where It Hurts. God, this would be a tour I'd see in a heartbeat. Absolutely. <laughs> Lil Wayne would have no idea who Caroline was and would pronounce her name wrong every night, but 25 different ways. Shout out Polachek. <laughs> Bada catch a check. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline Polachek. <laughs> what do you think won here? Oh, Lil Wayne. I think so too. I think Lil Wayne Comfortable handedly takes this one. Give me a percentage guess. 56%. I'm going to say 60. Grant, what was it? 
Caroline moves on. Hey, y'all, we've been proved wrong twice in a row. Wow. And uh, what was the percentage? 52.6. Narrowly, but get that ass beat, Wayne. We're starting to get surprised more, which I'm really liking. I like that too. We've got Blue and Moody Music, Hiroshi Sato, and Cloud Busting by Kate Bush. I think Kate Bush takes this one. I don't know. I'm kind of riding the vibe. I think Blue and Moody Music took control of anybody who listened to it, and it's going to keep powering on. Yeah, I don't know. I just see, I just, Cloud Busting is too good. I think it's like name recognition plus an amazing song yeah. going up against it has just enough to topple Blue and Moody music. That's what I think. Grant, who's the winner? Kate moves on. Yeah. Down goes Hiroshi. I can't even look at this one. I, I don't, don't even, I can't do it. I can't do it. Scenes from an Italian restaurant, field always. I think Billy Joel moves on here. Oh yeah, if that's the case, I don't know. I think that's what happened. I don't know. There's enough Drake haters. There's enough people who think it's funny that the Billy Joel song sounds like that. And there's enough people who also just can tell. Yeah. That it's one of the best songs ever made. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't. If I do. Angry Young Man was in here, would you be happier? Yeah. I like that song way more. Really? Yeah. That song's about Jesus. There's a lot of great songs about Jesus. Really? Gospel music rocks. Oh. I thought well, you hated God. I thought you hated Christ. I do, but I like music. Oh. I don't like murdering people, but I like music about it. Oh, nice. See what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. I love worshiping the devil, and I hate the music that's about it. So it is about separating the art from the artist for you. Correct. What one, Grant? Billy Joel. What? <laughs> Whatever. I'm uh, I'm riding for it now. I'm on the novelty. Battle of Red. <laughs> Battle of White. Render and Ned. We were both going, going steady, steady in the summer of 75. Yeah, it's fun. It's a good song. Elite Eight. Elite Eight. First one we've got Fear versus Mercy, Mercy Me. Yeah, I I, woo, I see a lot of similarities here. I think this is where the respect of the classics kicks in. I think they might have taken Mercy, Mercy Me. Yeah, I think you're. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think like odd. Uh, yeah. Ah. Woo, ah. I don't know. I'm I'm not even guessing on this one. I'm gonna guess Marvin Gaye took it, but it could go either way. Grant, what do we got? Fear moves on. Okay. Fear. Was it close? 52.1. Yeah, pretty close. It was close, yeah. Hey, I ain't mad. Actually, I am a little bit. <laughs> now we've got Father Stretch My Hands Part 1 versus Digital Love by Daft Punk. Very similar tracks. <laughs> I think Daft Punk moves on. For the same reason I thought Kanye was going to lose last round, you can feel better about voting for Daft Punk. Yeah, it's just our fan base. I know. They love this song. I know that. Well, they love your mixtape that has this song in it. What do you mean? Your Hoops mixtape. Do they love it? Yeah, they love it. I don't read the comments on that because oh, I'm just a little too sensitive know. about it. They fucking love it, dude. Yeah. They love it. A lot of Billy Joel on there, too. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Uh, yeah. Vienna was on that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> Vienna don't, don't me. stop. Grant, what won this matchup? Daft Punk. Yeah. Good. I'm glad. Okay. But I was wrong. Yeah. But I think I like Digital Love more than Father Stretch My Hands Part 1. I think so too. I could listen to it more times in a day. I don't get tired of listening to Digital Love and I can listen to Father Stretch My Hands Part 1 on the right occasion and it is awesome, but I'm not going to listen to it every day. Yeah, that's fair. One of them is really short too. Father Stretch My Hands Part 1 is so short. Yeah, it's like you. Short ass. Bitch. I'm not short. Stand up. I can't. <laughs> Aretha Franklin versus Caroline Polachek. I think Aretha walks. She walked so Caroline could trot or whatever she's doing on this song. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I'm not arguing their influence. I'm trying to pick what our fans would pick. Yeah. But I doubted Aretha last round for the stylish reasons of Sade. And I said Caroline kind of has some of that same allure and I... Aretha proved me wrong, and I think she's going to do it again here. I think the silent majority showed out here. I think there are a lot of people here who were like, <laughs> you know? They voted for Caroline, but they would say in the comments they voted for Aretha. Yeah, you come on, I mean? she got robbed. They're like, the Queen wow, of Soul. That's messed up, guys. In but Detroit? I'm going to say Caroline won. Okay, I'm going to say Aretha. What did it, Grant? Aretha moves on. Yeah. Okay. Daydreaming to the final four. Really surprising to me. Out of all the songs I picked, I would not have. Actually, I don't know. They're great fucking songs. I got awesome taste. <laughs> <laughs> and now we got Cloud Busting versus Scenes from an Italian Restaurant. Scenes from an Italian Restaurant is going to go to the finals. I feel the momentum. I'm ready to jump on the bandwagon. I apologize for what I said. I understand the greatness of it. I want to listen to it right now with you. Can we pause the video? Yes, I'd love to. 
Wow. Wow. Right? I gotta give it to you, right? man. I mean, oh. <laughs> Out on this bread, shakes of chicken parm everywhere. I am still fat and I'm a guy. That's <laughs> awesome. He yeah. doesn't say anything like that, but that's, yeah. But it's the energy. The vibe is Right, that. totally. Yeah. 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 Oh. I mean, it's like a roller coaster. Yeah. It really is like a, a really exciting roller coaster. It makes me love my mom a little more, too. I see where you're getting at. Yeah, with that. totally. It makes me really love your mom. As you should. Yeah. Awesome cook. She's an amazing chef. So, yeah, I believe it wins here for the reasons of it being awesome and cool. Thanks for saying that. <laughs> uh, I think it wins here, but I'm not confident in that. Cloud busting is a fucking great It song. is a banger. Yeah. And it's a way better song. I'm, well, Grant, what won here? <laughs> Billy Joel. Yeah. It's going to the finals, dude. I'm telling you. It's on an unstoppable track right now. <laughs> if it beats Aretha Franklin, I'm going to beat you. <laughs> That's <laughs> No, like... actually, it should because it is a great song. Thank you for it saying could. that. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> All right, final four. Our final four is an even split. Love it. Your songs and my songs. It's a two for two. It's beautiful. We've got Fear by Kendrick Lamar versus Digital Love by Daft Punk. I think Fear wins here. It's serious. Everybody loves both these artists. That can't be argued. But I think like Fear's like more obviously more of a profound song. Here's why I don't think that Fear won. And I'm not just arguing yeah. for my own song here. I think my logic is that one, we've done a Kendrick Lamar bracket. Yeah. We have not done a Daft Punk bracket. We have not done a Billy Joel bracket. We have not done an Aretha Franklin bracket. Yeah, true. I think they wouldn't want to see a song from an artist that we've already done a bracket of go to the final of another bracket. I don't think they're thinking about it like that. I think they're voting really on what's their favorite song. I hope so. But I'm yeah. just saying, I think there's like something, like maybe yeah, just yeah. like subconsciously to some people. I also think, I wish there was a term for this. It's almost like a guilty pleasure turned on its head. It's like the idea that you're very proud of liking a song that you understand other people might take issue with or think is corny. Sure. That's like a new age thing, but I'm saying yeah. like, you know, Firefly by Owl City. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of that with Carly Rae Jepsen songs. People will just kind of be like, I don't care what you think. Like, yeah. They, they want to come out and be proud that they like it. I hope that happens with uh, The Office. <laughs> what? Like, I hope it's cool to like The Office again one day because it's just so good and undeniable. Kind of happened with Family Guy. Family Guy had a resurgence. That's right. more ironic. No. Absolutely It's it is. good. I mean, it is good, but it's undeniably. I, it's, it's an ironic thing that people are doing with The Family Guy. Thing. There's something ironic about loving digital love, too. I don't think so. You don't like The Office? I haven't really seen it. Okay. Like, I haven't seen enough of it to make a decision. Check back in with me when you're done. Can we pause the video and I'll watch all of The Office from front to back? No problem. <laughs> okay. Wow. Dude, Dude right? Dwight? Creed. Creed, right. Creepy Creed no is what I like to call yeah. him. Oh my God. Oscar. <laughs> Oscar was hilarious. Dude, yeah. 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 Stanley. Yeah. The last season sucked. I liked it. I didn't really like Robert it. Robert California. Yeah, I don't know. But I mean, the rest of it was amazing. Yeah. God, I need a Pam. Parkour, parkour. <laughs> <laughs> I need a Pam though. I am Jim. Craig Robertson. Craig Robinson. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Hot Tub Time Machine. The basketball episode. Yeah. Oh, I oh. love the basketball episode. Come Play in the basement or whatever. Fuck yeah, man. The warehouse, yeah. Yeah, the warehouse. Yeah. All right, what one here, Grant? Fear. All right. Hey, you were right. And when you're right, you're right. Now I'm almost hoping Scenes from Italian Restaurant wins. And now we got Aretha Franklin daydreaming, Scenes from Italian Restaurant, Billy Joel. I'll say this. Hmm. They both can play the shit out of the piano. Absolutely. You seen that video where Aretha makes Barack cry? Yeah. Wow. And have you seen that video of Billy Joel playing Angry Young Man? Wow. He He's like, standing. Yeah. He's going. <laughs> the piano like starts smoking at yeah. one point. You can see the smoke. <laughs> and the piano starts smoking a cigarette after that. <laughs> which is you have to yeah. if you get rubbed out that hard. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. It's the only song that Billy Joel can't play on the piano anymore yeah, yeah. is Angry Young Man. This one he can still play and <laughs> he does. And it's awesome. And Grant saw it live. <laughs> and Grant saw it live. But uh, I'm going to say Billy wins here. I, yeah. But it's kind of the same logic as the last thing that I said about Daft Punk. I thought people like got on the hype of thinking it's funny <laughs> that it's like whatever. I think the hype train for scenes from Italian Restaurant was real. I think there were secret group messages going on during this bracket. Yeah. Kind of like campaigning for scenes from like, Italian hey, restaurant. We should all pick scenes from an Italian restaurant. Yeah. There's also moments along the channel where you've sang it. There's no moment where I was like, daydreaming and I'm thinking of you. Fire though. Pretty good yeah, job of me job. singing. Yeah. Great job, yeah. But I think people, there's like a I don't know. There's something lovely about your love for this song. And people <laughs> you, you like hated it. my love for it. Like a I second know, ago, but. but I'm just like denying it. I'm going Billy. I'm going Billy too, but please shock me. Grant, what one? Aretha moves on. My taste is superior. Kiss it. Oh, too wet. <laughs> Good dog's mouth. <laughs> yeah. 
My fault. <laughs> no, yeah, that's all right. Drink a lot of lemonade today. I'm honestly a little bummed. Yeah, because it would be nice to have like a you versus me in the finals, yeah. but it's you versus you, yeah. and your taste reigns supreme. Thank you. And I love you. And you I love you a lot too. to be proud of. You do too. Thanks. All right. Well, great job, everybody. Thank you so much for voting. It means so much. This was so fun. And also, we don't have to put a poll in the chat. I was going to say that. The yeah. poll already happened. <laughs> the song yeah. is going to win. And if you're in the chat saying, well, I wanted a poll or something, join the Patreon and you can be a part of the next one. You can do it. It's only like five bucks. Also, <laughs> we're going to link the playlist in the description. If yes. you want to retroactively listen to all of these songs, yeah. that will be linked down there. So this is our final two. You guys have already decided for us. I will say I prefer Fear as a song mm -hmm. over Daydreaming. Daydreaming is not my favorite Aretha song and definitely not my favorite song that you picked yeah. on here, but I respect it and it's amazing. I think it wins. And I, I do like it more than Fear. I think Fear wins off of the recognition of like our fan base really loves Kendrick. Kendrick. That's true. And they're like, who the fuck's Aretha Franklin? Bro? <laughs> <laughs> I've never even heard of her. Okay, well, I guess we'll see. And that's the beauty of it. What, what one, Grant? Grant? Aretha Franklin. The Queen of Soul wins the favorite songs of all time bracket. Wow. I rescinded my statement of being shocked that Aretha went to the final four, but I'm actually really shocked Aretha won. I am super shocked. Grant, what was the percentage breakdown here in the final? 50.1% Aretha. One, like by a f two votes? 481 responses, 50.1 of that's probably... Like one or two? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. God. Tied for the closest matchup of the entire thing is the final. That's awesome. It's just a classically great song. It is by no means like the cool choice. And I like seeing that that won. Like that makes me really happy. Yeah. It warms my little cold icy heart. The thing I love about this is that you learned a lot about us, music that we love, and we learned a lot about you. Oh, I, 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 about each, ourselves. Well, yeah, we learned yeah. a lot about each other as well. Yeah. But we learned a lot about you guys yeah. and what you guys like more collectively. Mm -hmm. But I invite all of you to make a playlist of 32 of your favorite songs. Share it with your friends. Do your own little brackets. Yeah. It's very fun to do. It was a treat. When we were doing this, putting these together, a lot of our friends kind of caught on and started doing that as well. Yep. My parents did it. My parents made playlists of their favorite songs. And it was just a, a very beautiful thing for people who really love music. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know we joke a lot on this channel, but that is the reason we started a YouTube channel is because yep. we love music and we love talking about it. And this was a very fulfilling and wholesome experience yeah, all the way through. And I am grateful for you guys for participating in it with us and listening to our favorite songs yeah. just because they're our favorite songs. Absolutely. You said it, pal. So thank you once again. If you could like the video, subscribe, all that stuff I said at the beginning. But Graydon, go ahead and leave these wonderful people with some advice to leave or live their lives by. A man is but a product of his thoughts. What he thinks is what he is. All right, this has been I'm on TV. We love you, appreciate you, and we'll see you in the next one. Daydreaming and I'm thinking of you. It's like when you put a raw dog inside of you instead of a dog in a plastic bag. <laughs> what, dude? Instead of wrapping the dog up in a garbage bag and then putting it inside of you, it's like putting the whole raw dog in there. It just feels better. Yeah. And it makes you climax quicker. Well, yeah. yeah, of course. I saw a video of a dog jump from the 10th story the other day and walk it off. Why can animals do that and we can't? We're supposed to be more developed. We're fragile. I know, it's crazy. Well, we've been sedentary for... What was that? Sedentary. Sedentary? It's just sedentary. Sedentary. Haunted Mountain. You get it. Whoa. Yeah. Well, she called me up way down in El Paso. She said, come back, daddy. Oh, I need you so. Bottle of red. <laughs> Bottle of white. Insano, coming soon.